Prosím. Zdravím, tu je Števo Ajzele a hovorím s Jozefom Králom. Ano, slyším vás u telefonu. No výborne, totiž to dostal som na vás tip, lebo zháňam párťáka na komentovanie prenosov Formuly 1, tak reku, že či by ste to nechceli so mnou skúsiť. Hmm, to je zajímavá nabídka. No vôbec netuším, jak mi to bude, ale tak pojďme to vyzkoušet. Červené svetlá zásly! Zaklutá je tu kontakt! A sú tam aj ďalší piloti, pozor! Neuveriteľné, kde mám stoličku? A pozor, je tu kolizia! Havarová! Tak toto je Armageddon v prvej zaklute! No, objel zvenku, jak snehuláka. Kolizia Mercedesov! Kupujte kardiostimulátory! Bože môj, čo to je? Kde máte pneumatiky? Ferrari to opäť strategicky nevyšlo. Hlavne, že neriskovali. Ale je to blbosť. Pardon, ale je to blbosť. Držíme ti palce a posielame kľúčenku. Čau, čau. Ahoj. Čau, lidi, ahoj. Napínáva prvá časť nášho Ice Kingu. Nebýt v Hanzu, tak tady určite nesedne. Králodrom. Je tu prvý Ice King debriefing. Wow, priatelia, čo na to poviete? Vítajte v našom vynovenom štúdiu. To čo bolo? A je tu jubilejný stý diel Ice Kingu. Ice King špeciál, špeciál, špeciál. Robert Kubica. Dzień dobry. Hello, Valtteri. Hello. Mark Priestley. Už je tu Patrick Schick na život. Víťaz Stanley Cupu, pán Marian Gáborík. Ahoj, ahoj. Pozdravujem všetkých panočíkov, Mata Špatu a aj v jednotky zvlášť. Červené svetlá z Hasvia máme odštartované!
Tak se Wow! Já jsem Števo Ajzele, toto je Josef Král a my všetci jsme Ice King! Ahoj! Kupujte defibrilátory, mne srdce vyskočí. Dámy a páni, KRS Movement a folklórny súbor Technik. Wow, 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 wow! No, a keď vás tu už máme, takto švárne devy, páni, o, aj svetelkovi sú tu. Chlapi, potrebujeme nacvičiť Pit stop. Čo vy na to? Idete do toho? Hej? Spúšťam stopky. 3, 2, 1, štart! Poď, 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 poď. No, už to majú trošku přes. Mamma mia, kde majú pneumatiky? No jasné, že len 3? Nie, ďakujeme, ďakujeme. A počkaj, dievčatá, pozrite sa, toto je najdôležitejšia, aj najlepší výhľad inak, ale tieto všetky ceny, tieto všetky ceny máme pripravené pre vás. Veličenstvo, povedz, čo tam je. Trošku ako... No mňa rovnou takýž napadlo, že je dobrý, jak si říkal, ty tři pneumatiky, že tam máme šumivé víno Ferrari Trento, jo? Není to Ferrari tři pneumatiky a takový ty věci, je to opravdu krásná cena, obrovská láhev. Takže můžete oslavit to, že samozřejmě všichni doufáme v to, že příští rok Ferrari na tom bude o trošičku lépe, takže na to se můžete napít přes rok a budeme doufat, že ten příští rok, jako už několik těch let v kuse, to je nějak tak stejný, ale že ten příští bude lepší. No a samozřejmě spousta nádherných cen, helmičky, už jste si určitě všipli, šimli, podepsané helmičky. Hej! Incident. Prvý incident. Druhý? Tuším druhý, hej, ale nikomu to nehovorte. Bolo to iba na livestreame. Je to podepsaný, je to v pohode. Máme tu Lego, McLarenu, máme krásne hodinky Festina, máme podpísanú šiltovku Botasa, Alonza, mini prílbu Karlosa Sainca a jedného veľmi chytrého chlapíka z Fínska. Ale o tom potom, najprv, najprv, ja vlastne nemám slov. Chceme vás v prvom rade privítať. Chceme vám poďakovať, pretože toto bude the best of Ice King. Budeme bilancovať 11 rokov. Máme tu zo pár archívnych záberov. Možno by bolo fajn si ich pripomenúť, lebo, Pepa, kto sú títo dvaja typkovia, prosím ťa? Ja práve prebejšlím nad tým, že sa dá říct, že asi tie roky sú docela fajn, že pribejvajú. Oni s ňa pribejvajú kila, což neviem, jestli je úplne fajn, ale doufám, že sa zlepšujem, ne zhoršujem. Ale 11 rokov, ja som včera večer nad tým premýšľal, že ty si môj druhý najdlhší vzťah v živote. Teď som si začal báť, co řekne. 11 rokov, 11 rokov, to už spolu ťaháme. Teraz na štedrý večer, to bude presne 5 rokov od spustenia Ice Kingu a pred tromi rokmi sme si zmysleli, že poďme sa stretávať osobne. A nikdy nezabudnem, ako sme sa rozprávali o tom, že no, tak dajme to na Instač a možno príde 20 ľudí, hej? A máme fotografiu z Max 60 Areny v Bratislave, hej? Zdvihnite ruky, ktorí ste tam boli. Áno, vidím, vidím. Áno, vás nevidím, ale počujem, to je tiež dobré. A to, čo vlastne Ice King robí Ice Kingom je je podľa mňa priateľstvo. To, čo si najviac vážime, nielen vzájomné, ale priateľstvo s vami. Tú dôveru, ktorú ste do nás vložili, tú zábavu, ktorú sa pokúšame pozvihnúť vždy na vyšší level. A spomeň si ty inak na to prvé stretnutie, ak sme tam prichádzali, nie? Že však príde 20 ľudí, brnkačka. No najväčší sranda byla, že opravdu, když sme prišli už rovnou, rovnou sme prišli tým autem dokonce společne, tak první takový ten pocit toho, hele, oni tady fakt jako lidi jsou, někdo dorazil za náma, potom, co jsme to vlastně dali jenom na ty sociální sítě. No a pak, když už jsme přišli dovnitř, tak začali chodit další a další lidi, jenomže začal být první problém, se kterým jsme nečekali, nějak nečekaně nepočítali, a to bylo, že jsme neměli dostatek vlastně stoliček, židličky tam chyběly, no tak jsme začali schánět. A nakonec to dopadlo tak, že vlastně vy všichni, co i na té fotce jste, hlavně teda tamhle, tady to vidím jenom já, až kevo, tak, tak nakonec jste nám tam vlastně pomáhali s těma židličkama, rovnali jsme to tam společně, a to myslím, myslím si, že bylo opravdu, to byl ten krásný, srdcerivný začátek Ice Kingu, no a 
kam se to teď posunulo, je naprosto fenomenální. Počítajme spolu. Košice, Bratislava, Brno, Lucerna v Prahe, Ostrava v Gongu. Určite som niečo zabudol teraz. Mladá Boleslav naposledy, že? Tiež vypredané. Dámy a páni, 10 Ice King Tour za nami. Toto je 11. spoločný happening. A teraz dobre počúvajte to číslo. Nový absolútny rekord. Je nás tu spolu s nami dvoma. 3218! Ďakujeme, ďakujeme, ďakujeme. A teraz vlastne som hneď potvrdil, že Matika mi nikdy nešla, lebo 3219 bude v oficiálnom zápise. Už sa to blíži. Ale najprv si urobíme tradičný prieskum, hej? Kto z vás fandil Michailovi Schumacherovi? Na tu bed. Hlavne bych dneska moc nekřičel, ale dobrý. Kto z vás fandil Heinzovi Haraldovi Frencenovi? Bratr Švákr Stric, jasné. Kto z vás fandil Mikovi Hekinenovi? Srandičky skončili. Ja myslím, že veličenstvo je čas. Vypadá to, ale musíte teda zabrať, že to bude takhle vlažný. Aby vôbec přišiel. Prvá vec, ktorá sa stala ráno, keď som sa zobudil, bola, že som si našiel e-mail, že Mikovo lietadlo má meškanie. Hej? Hovorím si, že tak to je konečná. To už naozaj nedáme. Všetko dobre dopadlo. Mika je vynikajúco naladený, teší sa na vás, na vaše otázky, na vašu interakciu, na vašu energiu a samozrejme aj my. Tak poďme na to. Nikdy by mi nenapadlo, keď som v 98. ho neznášal, lebo porazil môjho obľúbeného Šumiho, že dnes sa budem tak na neho tešiť. Poďme na to spolu, pretože medzi nás, dámy a páni, prichádza dvojnásobný šampión Formul 1, Pán Mika Hekinen! Ďakujem so moc. Ďakujem. Ďakujem, Mika. Ďakujem. Ejským tour. Wow. Fantastic Formula One fans. Thank you. I don't think I need any uh, presents for this Christmas. <laughs> you know, this is it. Uh, musím to skúsiť, ako minulý rok s uh, Davidom Kultárdom. Is real. Je to skutočný. <laughs> je to naozaj, naozaj sný uh, Mika Hekinen, dvojnásobný šampión v službách týmu McLaren Mercedes. A samozrejme, Prečo sme si ho dnes zavolali, asi najviac všetkých to zaujíma tá otázka, ktorú ja mu položím hneď na úvod, lebo sa to podľa mňa doslova pýta. Mika, máš nakúpené darčeky pre deti? Yes. Ďakujeme za návštevu a želáme všetko dobré. Uh, no, it's it's always a, it's quite a challenge actually. You mm. know, uh, I think today's world is a very materialistic. You know, it's it's a it's a very challenging. What 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 kind of presents? You know, I have five children all together. Two of them are nine years old and thirteen years old and eighteen years old and twenty three years old and so I <laughs> have big family. So it is. It's not easy. You know, it's a, it's a very good question that way. If I have presents for my children, so it, it's not. Uh, It's not so straightforward, so, you, you know, I try to be innovating something and I'm not so good in my hands to do, you know, <laughs> presents. I'm a good racing driver, but uh, in that, so, so but it, it's a good fun. It's, it's, I think the most important that way, the family is together and, and enjoying good food and, and uh, just enjoying watching good films and relaxing. That's the, that's the good thing. Ah, krásne. Uh Dáme si, dáme si rýchly preklad. Mika priznal teda, že podarilo sa mu skorovať 5 krát, takže má 5 detí. 
s darčekmi je to problematické, materiálna doba, ale najdôležitejšie, a naozaj to bolo krásne, je byť spolu, oddychnúť si, dobré jedlo, zbytočne sa nestresovať. Uvidíme, ako zvládne najbližšie dve hodiny, špeciálne pod týmto tlakom, ale už nám povedal, že on, ja mám dva tituly a žiaden tlak vôbec necítim. Rošada, dobré. Motory, že jo, to je jasný. Jak se začíváte, máte většinou výfuk napravo, tak pak jako to je špatný, takže jsme si tady udělali takový rychlej switch. A... Ale je to všechno dobrý, už se slyšíme. A, ale já si pamätám, ako jsem raz robil rozhovor s Jackiem Stewartom na Monze, a oni zažili ve 12 šialené at- atmosférické, mal by si mu to prekladat jinak. A, a, a on těž mi povedal, že kámo, pojď blíže, já tě vůbec nepočujem. A, Poďme možno trošku spomínať, naťukli sme tie Vianoce. My máme množstvo darčekov, celý tento event, najväčšia formulová party roka, je takým malým veľkým darčekom aj pre nás osobne. Poďme spomínať, pretože máme z archívu nádherné fotky Miku Hekinena a začneme takým tým... No, detstvo. Uh, skús, Mika, popísať, ako vznikla tvoja láska, tvoja vášeň k motorsportu. my passion for motorsport i mean this i mean this is uh it's quite a it's a great picture uh first of all Tom, Tom yeah, you look great <laughs> and and uh, i have seen it of course many times uh i have seen this picture in magazines and in uh, in the internet and this and that but i never have told anybody that who is in the picture is my sister <laughs> It's not me, it's my sister. Na fotke je sestra Miku Hekinena. A teraz, nikto sa to nedozvie samozrejme, iba live streamujeme to, hej? Žiaden problém, problém. Takže ďakujeme za toto tajomstvo, ale uh, vidíme, že sestra bola veľmi talentovaná, ale teda čo tvoja motorsportová vášeň? Ako to celé vzniklo? Well, uh... I was, yeah, I loved it, motor racing. I loved it, uh, not really, I loved it to go in fast. You know, I loved it to drive fast. And, 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 uh, and that's where the passion coming from. You know, I tried everything when I was a young kid. Uh, of course, I tried ice hockey, uh, cross country skiing, slalom, uh, ski jumping. I tried every sport and summer, of course, played football, uh, all kinds of sports. But I realized that way, i wasn't so good at it, you know. Ice hockey, you know, I think I was quite skinny, quite, mm-hmm. you know, not strong enough. Uh, and and uh, the motorsport was something when I did sit in a go-kart and, and I start driving, I really felt that way I'm, I can explore myself. I can really uh, use my 100% my decisions of going in the corners or being in the middle of the corner or coming out of the corner. I can put the car sideways if I want. I can keep the car straight if I want. You know, I can accelerate. You know, I was, I was in charge 100%. So suddenly this became very passion for me. I loved doing that. But then of course came challenges. You had to be quick. So you need to be very precise and, and, uh, and uh, not making mistakes. And then it become more challenging. This, This passion become a challenge and it became even more interesting. It's a really long story. It's okay. To translate. Yeah, nevoj sa, ja dám dietnú verziu. I wish I would speak the Slovakian or Czech language. But they are not, not breathing. Nedýcha nikto z vás, ani ja inak skoro, ale iba žiabra mi. Ale skrátená verzia, opäť raz, Mika v detstve skúšal všetky možné športy, ale Napríklad, čo sa týka mm, ladového hokeja, tak bol proste príliš chudý, nehodil sa na to, ale keď sadol do tej motokári, tak hneď cítil, že áno, v tomto sa cítim dobre, môžem skúšať, jazdím na boku. Ale pozor, potom už na tom vysokom leveli je to o preciznosti, byť naozaj, byť ten lepší, ako sú všetci ostatní. Celé, celé to detstvo, tá mládež, ten presun do F1, aj dnes to vlastne vnímame, je neuveriteľne náročný. Motokári, samozrejme je to drahé, ale veľmi dôležité je mať dôležitých koučov po svojom boku. A z okolností uh, je inak pravda, že, že zlomova, zlomové bolo stretnutie s Kekem Rosbergom uh, v saune. Šampión fínsky, že 
vylepšil a naozaj nasmeroval tvoju kariéru správnym smerom? Did you say sauna? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's uh, yeah, uh, Asi chce odejít. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Pozorný ten sauna. Yeah. There, there, is a, there is a journey of your, your life. There is a journey of your career. And, and motor racing is, is a lifestyle. It is, a, it is like a marathon, you know, to, to, to go all the way on the top, to able to be the best in the world. Uh, you no way you can do it alone. So, so you can get, you can go a certain, certain distance in your in your career in motor racing, and and the start of your career, of course, the parents are important factor who helps you to go very far. Actually, you know, in my case, my parents helped me until I was 18 years old, and and uh, before that, in a go karting, because I started when I was six years old, I I was managed to get the good. Good success. Uh, the success mainly came in Scandinavia, Finland, and, and Sweden, and Denmark, uh, and, and uh, did quite a few races in also in France and in Italy with go karts, but not with the great success. Uh, so, so you can go quite far, help of your parents, and, and then, then came the time in when I was 19, and I was I was going from the go karts to bigger formula. Again, you have to translate a lot of stories. No worries, no worries. Well, I couldn't talk like one hour here, you know. Yeah, um, <laughs> I met David Kultar last year, so... Uh, okay, takže teraz to dám na 20 sekúnd, aby videl. Uh, <laughs> motokári sú veľmi náročné, vyzývavé. Uh, dokážete sa aj v škandinávskych krajinách dostať pomerne ďaleko vďaka pomoci rodičov, čo sa Mikovi podarilo až do 18 a potom proste potreboval ďalšie nakopnutie. Nie, dobre som to skrátil. So, yeah. <laughs> so then the career continues. So, so you really, you really do need a a somebody to help you in your career, who has been in higher categories in motor racing. And in my case, it was Keke Rosberg who who came to help me, to manage me to move next steps in my motor racing career, becoming a professional. Before that, it was a hobby. Now I become a professional. So. So what that includes to how to handle the media, how to present yourself, uh, fitness programs, uh, and how to communicate with the team, how to travel globally around the world, how to take care, <laughs> basically how to take care of yourself. So there was a lot of elements what, <clears throat> what management need to advise and help me to do. It was nothing to do with the driving. You know, the driving, I knew how to drive a car. But that is such a small time, actually. What, what, what you do is the driving is such a small time of your, of your career. So <clears throat> he, Keke Rosberg, came to, to help me. <laughs> But it wasn't free, yeah? Takže je to naozaj iba malá časť vlastne vašej kariéry, je to reálne jazdenie. A keď potrebujete urobiť prechod z motokár k tomu profi motorsportu, tak je to obrovský skok. A vtedy potrebujete stretnúť toho práveho človeka, ktorý vás do tohto procesu preniesie. V mojom prípade, teda v Mikovom, to bol Keke Rosberg. Naučil ma pracovať s médiami, čo sa týka cestovania, čo sa týka trénovania, naozaj všetky dôležité detaily. A potom sa v Mikovom živote zjavil človek, a poďme sa o ňom pozhovárať, pretože to je človek, ktorého väčšina z nás videla minimálne vo filme, čítala knihu, ale legendárny James Hunt bol takisto gestorom, koučom Miku Hekinena. Čo, čo ťa naučil James Hunt okrem kvalitnej párty? Yeah, t- James Hunt indeed. T- this was the time already when I was in Formula 1. So in, in 91 example, uh, when I joined the Formula 1 with Team Lotus, uh, yes, Keke Rosberg was my manager. <coughs> But same time I was in uh, Philip Morris Academy, basically. Like you have different racing travel academies these days. I was in a Philip Morris Academy. And, and uh, the, the James Hunt, uh, when I was selected to that academy, James Hunt was one of these judges. And, and uh, I, I did go see him quite often uh, uh, in his home in London. 
and a very interesting person, fantastic person. And why did I go see him? Because I was quite tense. I was really tense and, and not relaxed. And, and people did recognize around me, Mika, come on, chill out, you know. Uh, but it wasn't easy, you know. I was racing uh, Formula One, it was my first year. Uh, I was in a racing a team which wasn't, wasn't really good. I mean, uh, they didn't have a high budget, so no money for testing. Um, the materials that we were using in a racing car wasn't very top. Uh, so, and you have to go 200 miles per hour or 340 or 350 kilometers per hour in a straight line. So it's not funny. So you, 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 you come tense and you come nervous and, and, and you are not relaxed. You want more. I said, come on, I'm in a team. I'm in Formula One. I'm not here to lose. I'm coming here to win. So I couldn't really explain it properly, probably, that uh, we need a change. And, and they, they advised me to go see the James Hunt and have a chat with him. So it was a very interesting time, very interesting time. And, and, and James Hunt, of course, world champion. Uh, and great racing driver, very respected racing driver in the world. And, and uh, yeah, he was, we were sitting, having an English cup of tea uh -huh. and, and uh, having a chat. And I didn't understand what, what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. You know, what, why do I have to see this, let's call it old racing driver. And, but every time when I was leaving from his house, he said, Mika, have fun. You know, enjoy what you do. And I still, when I sat in a car driving away from his house, I was wondering what, what that really means, how to have fun. But later on in my career, I understood, you know, you need to enjoy what you do. And, and uh, it, was a, it was really good time what I spent with him. V týme Lotus, ktorom Mika začínal, tak to bol už na riadnom zostupe, tým nemali poriadny budget. V podstate ich monoposty boli šunky. Naozaj veľmi často poruchové, takže Mika bol aj z toho celého taký napätý, nervózny a jeho najväčším problémom bolo v podstate nejak sa uvoľniť v tom celom svete. A tým, že jeho manažérom bol Keke Rosberg, ale James Hunt bol v rámci Philip Morris Akadémie, bol jeden z tých arbitrov, z tých, z tých sudcov a Mika dostal typ, aby ho navštívil, aby s ním konzultoval. A bolo to vraj veľmi, veľmi cenné, pretože sedeli pri Čajíku a, a debatovali Čajík, James Hunt, to mi celkom nejde do úst, ale, um, ale, ale odchádzal vždy od neho z jeho domu s tým, že áno, viac si to užívaj. A, a nie je to vôbec jednoduché, samozrejme, prísť na to až v neskorších vlastne obdobiach kariéry. A tým sa vlastne plynulo dostávame a opäť máme tu taký pekný set fotografií. Mnohí z nás ani možno nevedeli, že ako Lotus uh, vyzeral. Všetci si pamätáme John Players, nie ten čierno-zlatý, alebo ten Camel verziu, ale, ale tieto monoposty, inak, ak dobre vidím, tak mal by to byť Žána Lézy, Michal Schumacher a Mika Hekinen úplne vľavo. A poďme ďalej na fotografie, ktoré... Uh, jedna z najslavnejších, a všetci to veľmi dobre vieme, a lietajúci fín. Lietajúci fín Mika Hekinen. Pán Mark Sutton urobil tento nádherný záber a super, že tlieskate, pretože fotka vznikla vďaka tomu, že Mika urobil chybu. <laughs> Môžeš nám vysvetliť vlastne, what happened? Čo sa tu stalo? Yeah, this was in the, particularly this, exactly that moment. I, I don't forget that one. Uh, it, it happened in, uh, in Australia, uh, in a, Adelaide, in, in, I think it was Sunday morning warm-up, and at that time when I was racing, we were running like when we started to race, and before the race you have a warm-up. It took normally half an hour, so what we do, we are full tanks of the fuel, so that, that is roughly about 200 kilos of fuel, so it's a lot of, lot of fuel. So, uh, and nowadays, they are how much they have now? 80, 90 kilos? Yeah, so, so it's a the car was heavy, so I came in a very 
very high speed corner, very fast right hand corner. And, and I misjudged the turning in a little bit. You know, there was a very high curb on the left hand side before you go in the corner. So I touched this curb a little bit on the left hand side. So I suddenly turned the car a little bit on the left. That means I missed my turning in point. So what that means, I couldn't anymore go in the corner. I had to go straight. And in the exit, there was this huge blue white curb. And when I saw that curb coming, I knew that way I have to, I have hit, the, I hit, the, I have to hit this curb straight. I cannot hit sideways. I have to hit straight. And because the car was so heavy, and when I hit the curb, it launched the car in the air. And uh, and you know when the racing drivers are sitting in the Formula One car, they sit. Your 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 butt is is very close to close to the ground. So so it, it it was quite painful. So my voice was not same after when I landed, but. Uh, I remember that, and, and when it landed, it broke the front wings, uh, and uh, and same time when I was driving to the pits, the, the team was calling me on the radio, is everything okay? I said, everything is okay. And, and uh, just a little damage, you know, in the car. But, you know. <laughs> No, dobre, to nakoniec dopadlo. Uh, Totižto Adelaide 91 v Austrálii. Minka netrafil šikanu a už vedel, že je zle, takže strhol to na ten obrovský, obrovský, to je vlastne fínsky obrubník. Uh, keď na, na to tak pozerám. <laughs> to tam naskval kvôli tebe nainštalovali. No a, a on už vedel, že je zle, pretože vo warm vtedy jazdili s 200 litrami paliva. Proste strašne ťažké boli tie monoposty. No takže padol poriadne tvrdo na zadok, nevedel veľmi teda rozprávať aj vo vysielačke, bol trošku zakriknutý, zlomilo to len predné krídlo, takže spomienka veľká, nedopadlo to až tak zle, ale práve chcem sa posunúť v čase a, a chcem to vybaviť čo najrychlejšie. Uh, asi zakliatá Austrália 95, najťažšia havária, pri ktorej Mika Hekinen takmer prišiel o život. A, a vieme to z histórie, že, že pri niektorých nehodách tí piloti sa vrátia silnejší, ale poznám aj pilotov, ktorým havária zničila kariéru. Napríklad taký Felipe Massa nikdy nebol už taký rýchly, ako pred svojou nehodou. Uh, Mika, bol si v kóme, bol si v ohrození života, uh, rekonvalescencia trvala, myslím, že viac ako dva mesiace. Kam ťa posunula v živote a v kariére samotná táto ťažká nehoda? Yeah, I mean, it was a it was a big accident, yes, and, and I'm sure many of you have experienced accident in your life, and, and the, the, that recovery period is always very challenging, because you are in a pain, uh, you can't move, uh, and so you rely on your surroundings, you rely on your family, of course, you rely on, of course, good health care, uh, uh, and that those are the priorities. In my case, of course, because everybody wants to make a story how I'm doing. So, so we need to have a security inside in a hospital and outside in a hospital, that way that nobody couldn't come inside, media and things like that. So it was, it was, I was very isolated, very isolated. So uh, the, the, the time when I was able to go out of the hotel with the, with the wheelchair, and I think that was only maybe two, three weeks after. So, so I said, no, you're not really allowed to go outside. I said, why? That's because there is people taking pictures and, and it was, I was really isolated. So it, that was very tough. But, but again, uh, how to able to come back from that kind of accident, it was really the power of the family, uh, power of your management, how I was taking care of it, power of the team, the McLaren team, who I was raising that time and And of course, the great hospital people, the doctors, the nurses, the whole thing. So it just took very good care of me. And, and that's that what, it, that what it was. And, and coming back to motor racing, really, the, the, no, nobody didn't give me any pressure. That way, you have to go back to racing, or do you want to go back to racing? Nobody didn't talk about it. Until, of course, there came a day when I need to make a decision what, what uh, what I, what I want to do, what I'm going to do. And it was, it was quite a, it was, it was a, it was the time when I finally got back to Monaco and I was sitting in my 
Teras, uh, looking, looking the lights of Monaco and <clears throat> knowing that way the time is coming, we can make decision. And, and the team came to information that way, you know, it's time to go for testing and, and uh, if you want and see how you feel. And, and uh, I wasn't physically yet ready, I, you know, uh, not, not strong enough because of course accident like that, you lose a lot of muscle, you lose weight, uh, you are full of medication. Uh, and and uh, of course, uh, because the accident, I lost some hearing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, so, uh, but that was all, luckily, that was all, luckily. Uh, Mentally, so, everything is okay. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. So, uh, so then, then when that time came that way I need to go to do the test, that way if I'm able to go back to racing, it was, it was quite, quite challenging. Not because I was afraid of driving a car. It was just more, uh, I had a feeling that way, what mechanics going to say? You know, how they going to, because I didn't look the same anymore. You know, they, they need to shave one side of my hair uh, off, so I had only one side of hair. Uh, <clears throat> and then, then also, also that way, to, when you have a big accident like that, you have a lot of nerves in your face. That way your impression of your face was not the same anymore. Oh my God, I got all the details. Uh, and and uh, of course I was skinny, really lost so much weight. So, so me to go to the racetrack, it was happening actually in Paul Ricard. So, so when I went to the racetrack and I was a bit nervous to see the mechanics, how they, what kind of what kind of expression they will give. And, and when, I, when I did see the mechanics, they were, they were quite shocked. Mm -hmm. They tried to stay cool, of course, but they, they were looking like, oh shit, this doesn't look good. So, um, so then, then came the time when I went in a car and I sat in a car in Paul Ricard and, and uh, I see all the instruments and I feel the seat. They start the engine, and when I'm driving out of the garage, I, I immediately felt like, wow, this is, this is amazing. I mean, this is like a tailor-made for me. You know, the car feels stable. It's just unbelievable. So when I go out of the pits to the racetrack, I put my foot down, and I, I just felt fantastic. This was amazing. So it's no way going back. So I just kept my foot down and going flat out. But of course, during that test, what I did my very first test, I, I went some high speed corners and my mind started thinking, if I go off there, <clears throat> what's going to happen? But some reason I was able to, to close that idea, to, to take it away. I said, I cannot think that. I cannot go to that corner and thinking about it. I have to focus on driving. I have to focus the lines and maximizing the performance. Stop thinking about that. You have to trust the car. You had to trust the team, and and the accident anyway was caused because of a failure on the rear rear uh, uh, tire. So it was not my driving arrow; it was just a punch on the rear tire, which is a really bad luck. So this got a really long story. No, eh? no so so uh, <laughs> this is a really long story. Uh, <laughs> But it's happy ends at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, it was a, it was a good one. It, it was a good one. It, I think it it has, it had a lot of lot of uh, positive in my life. It, mm -hmm. it really made me to, to uh, make decisions much. I don't say slower, but it made me to go really much deeper in my decisions, mm -hmm. uh, and and to look more the future and to prioritize the importance of life, not not just to look one direction, the, the, the Formula One is the only thing. No, 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 the life is here. Let's enjoy other things also in your life, you know. <coughs> Držte mi palce. Uh, bola to veľmi ťažká nehoda, našťastie nebol som ja na vine, pretože uh, tam bol defekt pneumatiky. No ale najhoršie na tom celom bolo byť v tej nemocnici izolovaný, byť tam sám, ste odkázaní na svojich najbližších, na svoj manažment, média tam číhajú, sú tam samozrejme bodyguardi všade. Ale potom samozrejme príde ten moment a 
Mika si ho pamätala úplne presne, sedel na balkóne v Monaku a mal sa rozhodnúť, teda čo, kedy bude comeback a, a bol hlavne nervózny z toho, OK, prídem na Paul Ricard a ako ma príjmu moji mechanici. A, lebo on si uvedomoval, bol som chudší, strátil som množstvo svalstva, a mal som problémy so sluchom, našťastie to je jediné, čo mi, čo mi zostalo a, a aj vlastne rôzne tie, tie svaly na tvári už pracujú inak. A priznal, že keď prišiel ten kontakt s mechanikmi, tak nedali to síce znať, ale cítil, že boli šokovaní z toho, akou zmenou vlastne prešiel po nehode. Ale podstatné bolo to, že keď si sadol do monopostu, cítil sa, že wow, toto je ono, je to úplne ako šité na moju mieru, vyšiel na tú trať a hneď sa cítil v starých dobrých kolajách. Akurát, keď už išiel cez niektoré rýchle zákruty, tak začal premýšľať, čo by sa mohlo stať, keby sa mohlo stať. Každopádne, už sa tu nezabávajte, ne... A mne mi jenom reagujem na tú fotku, že vlastne to vypadá, že tady sa rozbilo nieco víc než tá formule, ale inak sme v pohode. <laughs> Tretí incident, po, počítame to, ale priznal, že tá nehoda mala vlastne veľmi, veľmi pozitívny vplyv na jeho život. Priznal, že, že možno teraz robím tie rozhodnutia o niečo pomalšie, dalo by sa tak povedať, viac o nich premýšľam, ale Formula 1 nie je všetko v tom živote, takže svojím spôsobom si ho viac užívam. Ak dovolíte, poďme premostiť teraz do aktuálnej sezóny, do aktuálnej éry Formuly 1 a zostaneme v téme zranenia, pretože my sme v tejto sezóne zažili niečo podobné. Daniel Ricciardo vrátil sa zlomení na ruky. To je copyright, viete, aby nás nemohli žalovať. He? A ešte sa ani neusmieva, ale je to Ricciardo. Podľa paprče sme ho spoznali. Čo by Mika poradil vlastne Ricciardovi a respektíve ako vníma ten jeho comeback, ako veľmi takéto zranenie v dnešnej dobe dokáže ovplyvniť pilota? OK, it's getting better. <laughs> A už je zpátky. Uh, to give an advice, it's, you know, like I told my story about my accident and, and uh, it, it, every personality is different and, and uh, everybody has different fears. Uh, you know, it's for him, it's it's challenging time, of course. Uh, I think uh, he's been having great possibilities, great opportunities in his career and, and uh, he's having big challenges because I don't see really anything else uh, when you go to Formula One that way to become a world champion. There's no way you go there to be second or third uh, or to be in a team which don't win. You know, you have to have a team where you win and then you have to prove yourself that way you can win. First year, second year, doesn't matter how long time it takes, you have to prove it to the team. You have to analyze it, everything what you do, what you do right, and maybe not everything what you do wrong, uh, but you have to really make sure, and your management job is to make sure that way the team understand that way this driver is doing the right thing. So when, if you don't get success, then you need to prove it. You just cannot talk and say, well, I'm the best and give me the car. No, you need to really prove it in, in, in the data, in a scientific way, that way all the elements are in the right place. Uh, so I think uh, uh, Ricciardo's situation is just he had to keep his foot down and, and do his best. And uh, he has a lot of fans globally around the world, which is great. Uh, but that's not all. You need to be world champion. You have to fight all the way. You need both. You need fans. You need a world championship. You need everything. <laughs> Tak každý z nás je samozrejme špecifický, každý má rád niečo iné, ale na konci dňa musíte dokázať tomu týmu, že na to máte, nielen na trati, ale aj pri študovaní dát. Samozrejme, Daniel Ricciardo má množstvo fanúšikov celosvetovo, ale do F1 nejedete s tým, aby ste skončili druhý, tretí. Každý chce byť proste šampión. A ja už len tak naťuknem, Mika, myslí si, že Daniel Ricciardo má potenciál ešte šampióna? Kde, kde ho radíš v tej hierarchii súčasných pilotov na gride? That, that is a very tricky question for me. 
Very tricky. Next Apache. You know, I think there's many fans of the <laughs> Chiara. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, you know, <clears throat> when I was racing myself uh, against other drivers, it's, for me it was very easy to, to look which drivers has a potential to win, which drivers has potential to be uh, fast drivers to get the pole position, which drivers can, again, win Grand Prix, which drivers can become a world champion. And, and it, was, it was quite easy to see, following these cars on the track, these drivers on the track, spending time with them outside of the track, listening how they speak, how they, how they are communicating with other people. Uh, so it was easy to see how far the journey will go with them. Uh, that's why it's unfair for me to criticize this young guy. Is he going to be, again, race winner or world champion? But he has a talent, you know, and talent is a great to have. Uh, but it requires a lot of work in surroundings. That way you're able to be there on the top every day. And how to get there, that's a, that's a very personal thing. It's a personality story, what his team around him have to understand. What does he need to stay on the top every day? Pekne si sa vyhol otázke, ale... Uh, hovorilo o osobnosti, samozrejme, každý je pre svojím spôsobom, samozrejme, iný. Ricciardo musí presvedčiť, potrebuje... Á, sme si kvít. A musí, uh, musí mať za sebou manažment, lebo on, keď jazdil, samozrejme, na trati hneď vedel lepšie posúdiť tých jazdcov, takže nerád by kritizoval zo svojej pozície. Ja mám pocit, že teraz potrebujeme prvý pit stop Pepa. Je čas. Trošku, trošku si vystreliť z ľudí. Myslíš? Ja si myslím, že aj je tu veľa vianočných darčekov, ktoré potrebujeme rozdať. Takže... Uh, uh-huh. Poprosím vás, vylosujeme v tombole. Ja si myslím, že začníme, nachystajme si tombolu a začníme hneď podpísanou šiltovkou Valteriho Botasa. Valtery Botas bol jeden vlastne zo zverencov. Mika Hekinen ho manažersky zastupoval a výraznejšie mu pomáhal. Takže poďme roztočiť naše koleso a okrem toho vás poprosím všetci výťazí, stretnime sa tu na boku, zavoláme vás potom spoločne na stage. Fotka s Míkom Hekinenom je súčasťou výhry v našej tombole. Tak ju poďme roztočiť. Hľadáme prvého výťaza dnes v NTC Arene. Podpísaná šiltovka Valtteriho Bota sa vidíte na Míkovi, aký je nervózny. O, toto bude tesné. To bude tesné. Marek Holub. Marek, šprintuj, šprintuj takto k nám. A už ho... A ono naozaj beží. Naozaj beží. Flat out. Výborne. Čo tam máme ďalej, veličenstvo? Ja myslím, že to Lego sa pýta, nie? McLaren. Čo? Ja, hneď to za- zašušťalo to tu. Áno. Tak 5 detí. Vieš, tak... Five kids, you know. <laughs> Jeden darček vybavený. Ale nie, ale nie. Poďme, hľadáme víťaza tohto nádherného Lega McLarenu. Ja. Ale hýbaj. Filip Nový. Filip Nový. Ten to bude mať... Ten už dnes niečo vyhral na meet and greet. Musíme sa ospýtať na, na čísla v športke. A poďme, na, poďme na set knížiek. Máme tu krásne, krásne knižky. James Hunt, Max Verstappen, David Coulthard, Michal Schumacher a knižka rivalí s podpisom. Miku Hekinena. Ako inak? Bude k tomu aj fotka. Celkom... Toto je vážna zasielka. No, no, no. Predved sa, kámo. Poďme žrebovať. Na dlhé zimné večery... Veľmi solidná výslužka. Jakub Jelinek. Á, výborne, Jakub. Poďme na to. Poďme, víťazi, poďte k nám, poďte k nám. A Pepa si zatiaľ nachystá svoj kanón. Zdravičko, páni. Ahoj, 
Knižky, berte knižky. Halo, koho sú knižky? Všetky sú tvoje. Jasné, všetky sú tvoje. Šapica. A poď, fotka je tu. Let's take a picture. Výborne, ďalší, 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 postupujeme ďalej do voza. Nebudeme im to tam už patiť, Pepa, hej? Vkázal fotku to. No. A krásne knižky. A to sa iba pomaličky rozbiehame. Buďte v pohode, sme v prvej sedmine dnešného programu. Ej, ej, ej! A teraz je čas, priatelia. Pepa nabil svoj kanón. Čo myslíte, kde to dostreli? Aha, aha. Ale ako mám jednu istotu, že nemôžu cílet s tímhle, s tím, co sem tam strčil na plochu, protože bych vás pravdepodobne mohl zastřelit. Takže budu cílet niekam tam nahoru. Radši se stejne kryjte, to další nepoletí tak daleko. Tohle ale jo. No poďme, ukáž sa. Opla! A čo si neraňajkoval? Tak tentokrát to neletelo tak daleko. No tak uvidíme, co další. Počúvajte, pri skúške to poslal do tržnice až tam úplne. Nevadí, nabijeme druhú. No, no, pozor. Ej, lepšie! Tam bola aj šmíkačka, ďalší incident. Pána Jána. Pepa, chce to... Čo to je? Úúú, McLaren tričko. Inak ty si vôbec ľuďom nepovedal, čo je vo vnútri. Že sú tam nejaké klobásy, ne? Á, jasné, jasné, dobre, dobre. Tak toto som zvedavý. Kam to pôjde, McLaren fanúšikovia? Oj! Oj, bitka! Fanúšik Mercedesu... Myslím, že to je v správnych rukách. A ja mám tak trošku pocit, že... že Mikovi sa to celkom páčilo. No, není to úplne jednoduchý, ale dobře. Aspoň niekam sme dostrelili, uvidíme, co ty další, pretože jeden nám fakt, ako... Při testu nám to letelo hodne, hodne daleko, takže uvidíme, kam sa až posuneme. OK, Mika. A teraz sa dostávame naozaj do bodu, ktorý zaujíma nie, že nás všetkých tu v... NTC aréne, livestreame, ale celosvetovo. A my ideme teraz vlastne preveriť tvoje veštecké schopnosti. A poďme si pripomenúť, ako to celé odštartovalo. Pretože 15.6. júna, června, vyšiel článok, v ktorom Mika Hekinen tvrdil, že tým McLaren ktorý dovtedy sa totálne trápil. Iba trikrát bol na bodoch, úplne boli márni. Lando Norris, aj Oscar Piastri. Tak tento pán z Fínska vtedy povedal, že McLaren do dvoch mesiacov bude atakovať tým Red Bull Racing. A teraz máme to tu. Máme to tu. Predtým, než sa spýtame Miku Hekinena, tak dovolte mi, aby sme sa pozreli na názory skutočných odborníkov. To znamená, pozreli sme sa do sekcie komentárov pod článkom. Nezmyselné vyjadrenie. Mika popíjal fínsku vodku. Nestihol vytriezvieť. Mika očividne fajčí matroš, ktorý ja nemám k dispozícii. Hej? Tak schválne. Kto z vás... Ne, ale priznajte sa medzi tými komentáři. Kto z vás si myslel, že to je úplná blbosť? Je tma, môžete sa priznať. Pohode, hej? Ja sa hlasím tiež. Ja som tiež tomu nechápal. Takže pýtam sa. Mika Hekinen. Ako si to vedel? Well, I t again, you know, when, when, I, when I see that, it makes me to automatically to think that... 
uh, <laughs> you know, what they've been drinking or smoking. <laughs> uh, I mean, I live uh, in motor racing all my life, and uh, and and uh, and uh, winning winning with uh, together with with uh, McLaren two times world championship. So, so for me, it took seven years before I won my first Grand Prix. When I joined the Formula One in 91, in the end of the 97, I win my first Grand Prix. So I saw all the time what is happening inside in a Grand Prix team, how they develop, what changes they need to do to able to win. So, so I lived that period of time, and, and uh, this was in 97 when I won my first Grand Prix after seven years, and, and then World Championship, I see again the development on the team, what they do to able to win and continue winning. So, McLaren has been having a challenging years uh, with Honda engine, was quite a, quite a difficult because the, they really were struggling with the power of the Honda engine, the reliability, uh, and, and uh, uh, then with the Renault, uh, challenging, Mercedes. Mercedes is the engine manufacturer where I won my world championship. So I know when they are in Formula One, they are they want to win. They don't. They are not there because they want to be second or third. They are there because they want to be win. So McLaren having this kind of partner like Mercedes is a very very smart. First of all, uh, second thing, uh, Zach Brown who is running a team. Is, is incredible personality. He, he works seven days a week. Uh, he's an incredible person to motivate the other people when they win and when they lose, he motivates them. Uh, he, he has a team that way they can really choose inside in a team to find the right place in a team. Is it the management, is it the engineers, mechanics, or designers, whatever, he has a team who can see this, what is the right thing to do. Uh, and then, of course, the money is an important factor, that way, investing in the money in the right directions, right materials, the right people. So he has a very good view, Zach Brown, to do these elements right. So I'm the brand ambassador for McLaren. <laughs> so these words are not just coming because I'm the brand ambassador, but because I've been living that journey in my life to see how the team comes and wins. And now I see the McLaren, what they are doing to able to win Grand Prix. So where they invest in money, how they do that. And they go in absolutely right direction all the time, including two great drivers. So this gives me the confidence to be, to see that way with the work, what they do, analyzing every little part of the car and understanding why it doesn't work. What are the data we collected to understand the data to make the better part for the car? So they understand all this development process. Uh, so, so again, you know, the car what they're building for next year, I think it's going to be amazing, you know, what they, what they are developing. And, and uh, in my time, when they were developing a car, it was in a paper and it was in the calculations, the numbers to put together. The car in a wind tunnel gives this and that and these numbers. So it's not anymore like that. Now it is about the data. It's about analyzing the data. And they can simulate different parts in the computers and simulations so many times that way they understand what they do. So these, all these information giving me confidence to see where the team is going. And, and uh, <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, next year they're going to be uh, better than this year. Ah, ah, ah počuli ste to? To je ešte skoro škoda, že dohral ten Harry Potter, co? No. <laughs> Veštec Fínska, ešte sa k tomu dostaneme. McLaren, vlastne nezabudajme, že Mika Hickenen je stále ambasádorom McLarenu, pozná ten tým. Pamätáme si ešte aj my všetci z Hondov, ako to nezafungovalo, s Renaultom nič moc, prešli na Mercedes, silná značka. Pozná Zeka Brauna, ktorý 7 dní pracuje v týždni ako, ako maniak a dokáže každému v týme nájsť správne miesto. Takže všetky tieto zložky dávali Mikovi informácie, vďaka ktorým uh, si bol istý, že tým je na správnej ceste a do budúcej sezóny takisto očakáva, 
že by na tom, že postavia úžasné auto, lebo jasné, majú nový aerotunel, nový, nový simulátor, takže to rozhodne takisto pomáha, ale čo piloti? Mika to naznačil, že 7 rokov čakal na prvé víťazstvo. Bolo to presne 96 veľkých cien. A teraz opäť. Kto tu fandí? Je tu nejaký fanúšik Landa Norisa? Dobre, nie málo, nie málo. Lando čaká na prvý premiérový triumf 104 veľkých cien. A už pomerne možno cíti takú nervozitu. Stále sa na to čaká, dokonca Oscar Piastri vyhral šprint v Katare. Čo by si poradil, Mika, Landovi Norisovi? Yeah, I mean, he's been on a limit. We have seen a couple of incidents this year, what happened, you know, and, and uh, but that, that's all normal. That's finding your limits, absolute limits, and, and making mistakes. And, and, but he is a personality who learns from his mistakes. And how do you learn from your mistakes? First of all, admit that you have done a mistake. Mm -hmm. Not straight away blaming it is a car or it is a team which doesn't do a good job and that's why I'm making mistakes. No, it is a responsibility what, what you take and Lando is a very good in that. So he learns from his mistakes. And I think, uh, I, I, you know, he's a, he's a great talent and an unbelievable uh, experience he has. So I would, I would expect he will win sooner or later. You know, is it, you know, he will win. Is he going to win the world championship? That depends about a lot of, lot of consistency of the reliability of the car and the team, of course, but he can do it. Uh, but there is <laughs> Oscar, of course, there is a... Uh, Lando Norris je úžasný talent a samozrejme bol s ním a videli sme viaceré chyby, ktoré urobil aj v tejto sezóne a najdôležitejšie je si tie chyby proste priznať, pracovať na nich. Lando je veľmi účenlivý typ a podľa Miku skôr či neskôr určite veľkú cenu vyhrá. Otázne je samozrejme majstrovský titul, tam potrebujete mnoho ďalších detailov, silný tým, a potrebujete konzistenciu v rámci toho týmu a samozrejme aj trošku šťastia. Ale... Uh, čo mladíci? Oskar Piastri. Ako veľmi dokáže vlastne zavariť Landovi, pretože Oskar je obrovské prekvapenie, dokonca nováčik roka v konkurencii Sargenta de de Frisa. Ale Oskar Piastri, hej! Tam ja, a mne len ja, podľa mňa, teda, vidím veľký potenciál. Yeah, he is a rookie of the year. He, he, he did a great job. Formula One is different now than in my time. You know, the team, management, all these are extremely professional. Uh, everything is organized in a very well indeed, all the way to the end. Only what the driver has to do at the end of the day is to drive and do it well. Uh, so when you are a talented driver and you have a good management, you have a good team, you can do a good job, quite a quite well, quite a consistent way, quite a long way. Uh, but it's uh, experience is something what you cannot bring it to the silver plate. Mm -hmm. You know, experience you have to, you have to learn, you have to get it. Uh, and, and Formula One is, is a very difficult sport. Uh, there is a lot of surprises and elements, uh, pressure from the media, pressure, pressure from the fans. Uh, so what, what he has to what he has to go through, but no, all the positive for him. He is a super good driver, mm -hmm. and super cool. So if he can keep his feet on the ground, it's 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 important. I think he can do that. No, veľká pochvala pre Oscara Piastriho, super talent. Ak no, zostane pevne nohami na zemi, tak má pred sebou veľkú kariéru, ale zároveň Mika pripomína, skúsenosti vám nikto nedaruje takto na striebornom podnose. Tie musíte nabrať rokmi, ale rozhodne nováčik roka a veľký obrovský potenciál. Ak rozprávame o tímových kolegoch, tak samozrejme musíme aj my, Pepa, trošku zaspomínať, lebo pred rokom sme mali takú milú návštevu. Bol tu, bol tu Mika, tvoj kamarát David, uh, ale na ňo prišlo iba 800 ľudí, takže možno niekde sa stala chyba, hej? Tu je 3200 s randičky bokom. A s Davidom Kultárdom ste vytvorili uh, dlhoročnú dvojicu v McLarene. Majstrovské tituly si nakoniec zobral ty. 
Existuje niečo také ako priateľstvo medzi tímovými kolegami? No. Oh, ďakujem za odpoveď. No, OK. No, come on, no. Really, I mean, the David, David, David is, a, is a great personality. You know, he's a great, great human being. Uh, and and uh, when, when, when he was my teammate in, in McLaren, uh, it was a very difficult time. Very difficult time with him because uh, he, he, had, he had a lot of difficulties to trust. You know, and, and when, when, you are, when you are communicating with your teammate, you need a, you need a, you need, you need to trust each other, of course, when you are in the debriefings and talking to engineers. When you're at the racetrack and you're driving, then necessarily you don't have to trust. Yeah, exactly. You, racetrack, you mean? Yeah, so, so, uh, so David, was, uh, David was quite a challenge in the first place. He has difficulties to trust me. Uh, and and that, that didn't bring a lot of, lot of great uh, uh, communication. Uh, and, and, uh, and, but, but we did, and I think David also felt in the start when he joined the McLaren team, uh, that way uh, the team is really giving me a little bit more better, better materials and this and that. And, And, and it was not too difficult to check from the data to understand the materials and study the data, the materials, what he's getting, what I was getting. Um, but then later on, when the years went by, we, we grow up, uh, we had our negative, we had our positive. We learned to understand each other better. Uh, we just grow more adults. And, and I think because I won a world championship, you know, it got easier. But, but a... Um, Well, I like I like David. You know, he's, he's he's a great great personality. He's a bit tight with the money because he's Scottish, <laughs> uh, but uh, he, but he's a, he's a good guy. I'm very I'm very proud that way. I can I can see him in a Formula One paddock these days. We do television work with him together. We are businesses uh, together involved with him. Uh, so he's a great great personality. No, pekný príbeh. Samozrejme, priateľstva medzi tímovými kolegami neexistujú medzi mnou a Davidom. No, bolo to, bolo to napäté, pretože David veľmi nedôveroval a v istom období mal pocit, že vlastne tým mne, Mikovi, dáva kvalitnejší materiál, kvalitnejší stroj, ale zase na datách to exaktne vidíte, že to tak nebolo. Takže trvalo roky, kým sa ich vzťah vyvinul, kým dospeli svojim spôsobom a dnes sú výborní parťáci, Uh, takisto biznismeni spolupracujú na okruhoch aj v rámci televíznych aktivít. Akurát David je trošku žgrlavý, lebo je škód. Ale samozrejme to len s úsmevom. Ak dovolíte, a, a Mika, ak si pripravený, ideme sa zahrať. Pepa doniesol svoje tangače. Nové. Je to krytka na oči. Krytka na oči a my sme si pre dvojnásobného šampióna pripravili hru rozpoznávanie okruhov rozpoznávanie formulových okruhov a sami sme veľmi, veľmi zvedaví, lebo nie je to jednoduché, ale sú tam známe trate, nie sú tam žiadne nejaké extrémne chytáky ani nič podobné. Budeme mu radiť, ale nie veľmi, hej? Okay? Nie je zase veľmi. My... Oh. Sekne mu to, co? <laughs> Jako dal sem mu doporučení, že si môže vybrať černou stranu nebo tu s týma zavřenýma očičkama. <laughs> Vidíte, co si vybral. <laughs> Simply lovely. Dobre, Pepa, priprav okruh číslo 1. No, no. Takže, ukáž Pepa publiku vlastne, čo to je. A, štartovacia čiara. No, Mika. You can say, you can say something. Oh, okay, there's a microphone. It's like a spaghetti. <laughs> no, it's not spaghetti. It's quite a, it, this is a paddock, yeah? This inside, is it? Can be. Can be? Yes. Is it right way around? Is this the main straight? Yes. Okay. Good. Now here we go, main straight, exactly. then it's a hot breaking, then it's going right. Idesh? What? Ah, is it going S right? Sandy vote, that's Sandy vote. 
Okay. Masena. What, 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 what? Okay. And is this? Rivage. Casino. Mirabeau. Oh, yeah. I live in here, Monaco. Yeah! <laughs> That's it. No, môj zlatý, už iba štyri. Tú krytku dáme naspäť. OK. That was fun. <laughs> We just started, Mika. Oh, there you are, just started. another four. Oh, my God, OK. Yeah. Why? Nie, že nám tu zaspí. Á, niečo ľahké. Oh, so easy. This is so easy. Veľmi krátka cieľová rovinka, áno. It's been a long time when I was racing, remember, you know. Okay, is this... This is not Monza. Because there is no hairpin like this. Yeah, good. What do you mean? This is the main straight. No. Oh, this is the oh, one of the most famous corners. corners. This one you mean? Yes. Yeah. And then this long straight up. One of the most the famous overtakes. And why, after, why after the how can this is so tight this corner? La source is La Source? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a wrong way around. No, it's not. No, it's like this. <laughs> ah, okay, it's a spa. Yeah. <laughs> Next one will be very easy. Very easy. Let's prepare. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 on sa nepýta na štart, ale na pedok. Bufety. Pepa to pokašľal. Pepa to zlomil. It's like a blind date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With 3,000 people, yeah. Ja idem preč, ja ho nepoznám. I wonder what is coming, you know. Okay, here you go. I hold the microphone. Oh, thank you. Okay, where is the pedal? Okay. Ten nás bude tak ohovárať, ja už to presne viem. Bude volať Kultárdovi to, kam si ma poslal? Ježiši Kriste. It's Jerez. It's Jerez. The last one. Definitely oh. the last one. Oh, no problem. And I think it's also easy. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, to the cover. Prosím vás, bez zvukových efektov teraz, dobre? Ja viem, že na každú svinu sa voda varí, ale ukážeme si to v správnom smere. Hentí dvaja, čo tam keramiku vyrábajú? Aha. What is that? To sme sa aj my pýtali, Vero. No, no, what is this? What do you mean paddock is here? Zase paddock. Here? Yes, there. Ah, now I start thinking maybe it's... Oh, it's wrong direction. Oh, yes. No, what is this corner here? Aha. All right. Looks like a pig, but not. All right. No. No, I've never been this track. Ah, you were. Oh, you really? Not driving. Ah, not driving. This is maybe. Wait a second. 
Is there can I can I, is there any casinos in this place? A lot. Ah, of. Las Vegas uh, then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bravo, Mika. Bravo. Nebolo to ľahké, aj z kazy svetom vedla. No, i, I pro mňa to teda nebolo ľahké, som sa z toho normálne zapotil. A, Mika, výborne, klobučik dole, a, a bol si vo Vegas tento rok, tak povedz nám nejakú vtipnú historku zo zákulisia Las Vegas. Čo si vlastne o tom podujatí máme myslieť? Páčilo sa ti tam? Yeah, Las Vegas. I mean, yeah, it, there, was a, there was a lot of expectations from people, you know, there was a big hype about the Las Vegas Grand Prix and, and me too. I was I really looking forward when I to go there and, and, uh, and uh, it was amazing, honestly. It was, uh, I, first of all, I don't, I don't think I never has seen same time seven Elvis Presleys walking on the paddock, you know. <laughs> seven of them and then on the on the paddock also there were weddings in a paddock. So they really put it in a big way, show and entertainment. And and normally when you walk in the Formula One paddock, uh, everybody looks serious. Because there's normally just the one winner. So the winner normally smiles and the team is happy. But all the other teams, they are not so happy because they are not winning. They constantly solve problems. Uh, so when you are walking on a paddock, uh, let's call it I'm a spectator, you know. I do some work for Formula One and McLaren and TV. <clears throat> but normally when you walk there, people are not so happy. You know, they are, they are so serious for their work and I understand that. But in, in Las Vegas, they really put entertainment on the paddock, you know, very colorful atmosphere. I think next year they're going to build even the casino inside in a, in a paddock. Uh, like I said, Elvis Presley singing everywhere. Uh, uh, so it was, a, it was a super good entertainment. And, and, uh, and then I did some hot laps. You know the hot laps with, uh, on, on Friday, yep. Saturday, not in Sunday in Las Vegas because race was on, on, on Saturday night or something. So, so when I did the hot laps with the McLaren around the track, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't very nice. It was very difficult track to drive, uh, simply because in the evening, all the huge neon lights everywhere, you know, casinos, <clears throat> it was such a distraction to perform and, and the temperature in the night time was super cold. So to get the temperature on the brakes in Formula One, very difficult. The temperature on the tires, very challenged. So it creates a lot of different kind of issues. Uh, and then outside of the racetrack, it's a crazy place. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, so many people everywhere. Uh, all the casinos full. Uh, is it seven o'clock in the morning or 12 o'clock at night? Everything is full all the time. And, uh, but, I would, I like to, I personally like to go there because it was so different, you know. If every Grand Prix would be like that, I don't think it would be good. You know, good to heart attack, you know. Uh, but uh, it was an experience, it was a good fun. Mm -hmm. Takže bola to veľká zábava, naozaj Las Vegas je, je bláznivé miesto a, a tá zábava, či už o 7 ráno alebo o 12 v noci, stále zábava. Nikdy v živote nevidel toľko Elvisov pokope na jednom mieste. V pedoku vlastne väčšinou sú to zachmúrené tváre, všetci sú fokusovaní, väčšinou nespokojní, ale v Las Vegas pedoku to nie, tam to neplatilo, tam bola úžasná zábava. Dokonca vraj plánujú postaviť kasíno priamo v pedoku v Las Vegas, takže to bude úplne bláznivé. A pridala aj historku o tom, ako jazdil Hot Laps, to znamená, že vozil VIP hostí v piatok a v sobotu, ak ma pamäť neklame, a vraj to vôbec nebola príjemná jazda, zvlášť kvôli tým svetlám, kvôli ako tam proste v Las Vegas je všetko vyblíkané, ale na strane druhej je rád, že sme do Las Vegas išli. A teraz to príde, priatelia, je čas na vaše otázky. Ideme prvé kolo otázok. No, ruky hore, nehambíte sa, vidíte, že Mika je úplne v pohode. Tuto to mám najbližšie, takže ideme tam. Takže, Mikina Artona Senu, ahoj, ako sa voláš? 
Miro, servus, tvoja otázka. Môžem v angličtine? Môžeš aj v angličtine, aj v slovenčine, aj vo finštine. Uh, Mika, year 2000 spa, uh, when you come to the Kemal Strait with the Michael, when you saw before you the Zonta monopost, uh, you was decided make it opposite on the Michael or it was just a second decision when you, see, when you was near? If you decide in one second, he go left, so I go to the right. Otázka na famózny predmiehací manéver zo SPA 2000. Či Mika Hekinen vedel, do ktorej strany pôjde pred ním, ako bol Ricardo Zonta a predbehol tak Michaela Schumachera? Well, that, that, that particular race, you know, the, the race started in, in a way that way there was just dry line. You know, it was raining night before, so the circuit was still wet a little bit. So there was only the dry line. Uh, the racing line was dry inside of the, of, the, of the track. It was still wet. It wasn't fully dry. So, so to, to able to perform and to do the good lap times, you really have to stick on a racing line. You cannot start moving too much right or left. And, you know. So me to able to overtake Michael before, it was very challenging because the, probably if I would have a chance to overtake him before, some braking areas, they were, the circuit was wet. So if I would have tried to overtake and to go on a wet patch, I would have definitely spin off the track. So that was the only straight where it was safe, let's call it safe, to overtake. So that was the only place to overtake. But of course, Michael was really aggressive. You know, he was pushing me on the, on the grass many times. Uh, uh, even we're going 320 kilometers per hour. That's just such a high speed. So then, of course, uh, when we started that particular straight, Uh, and I was behind the Michael, and I was catching him very fast, and I knew that way, again, he's going to be aggressive. Again, he's going to block me if I try to overtake, but then in the distance, I saw, indeed, this, this uh, uh, Ricardo Sonda. Very good friend of you. <laughs> It was so expensive. <laughs> uh, so I saw him driving on the middle of the track. And normally, if you have any kind of problem with your car, technical problem, it's like if, you have, if you're driving on a highway, you have a technical problem, you don't stop middle of the highway. You go on the side of the highway. No, but this young man, this young man was driving, driving middle of the track. So, uh, so uh, already I knew that way Michael will overtake him. Like you can see this picture on the right-hand side, he will, he will take, overtake him right-hand side because the circuit was dry. So when he goes under braking position, he will have a maximum grip. And he knew that way Mika will probably drive the other side of the track, but his tarmac is wet. But I have to take the risk. I have to take the opportunity because if I would not to do that, I would never be able to overtake him in that race. So I did and overtook and I took the risk and I was counting on that because I had a lot of downforce in the car in that speed. So the car was really, really, you know, gripping well on the tarmac. And the Michael just realized also when I was side of him, that way he has no chance. And then it was a nice finish. I was happy to see him in the mirrors. <laughs> you know, I'm sure he wasn't very happy that time. So, so it was a good, good finish of the Grand Prix. Mm. So. Tak, uh, Adam. Sorry for the Ferrari fans, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Práve som to chcel povedať, že neznašal som ťa vtedy, ale, ale sme veľmi radi, že si prijal pozvanie, uh, napriek osobným animozitám. A manéver. Ešte sme neskončili. Ja som o to přeložil, tak jenom neviem, okay, ako okay. aby... Dobrý tak... je, že sa medzi nima v tuhle chvíli, okay. snad sa nebudú okay. práv. <laughs> Takže, uh, manéver... Jasný, bolo, boli premenlivé podmienky, suchá stopa bola iba na Camel Strait, primotal sa nám tam Ricardo Zonta, keď máte poruchu aj na diálnici, neodstavíte to do doprava, ale Ricardo Zonta išiel stredom, takže to bolo fajn. Tým pádom som vedel, že to je moja jediná šanca, lebo uh, Michal Schumacher bol agresívny, určite by ma zablokoval, ale pustil som to z tej strany, mal som v monoposte veľa, veľa prítlaku, takže som si veril a potom bolo vlastne úplne skvelé vidieť uh, Michala vo svojich spätných zrkadlách. 
A aj sa ti sníva o, o tomto manévri? Pretože túto historku si pravdepodobne rozprával už miliónkrát. Je to taký moment, keď večer sedíš na gauči a povieš si, že jo, toto sa podarilo. Um... No, I don't. <laughs> Ďakujem veľmi. Ja už no, idem, no, hej. You know, it was enough, you know, the one time, you know. <laughs> uh, zostaňme ale ešte pri vašej rivalite s Michailom Schumacherom, pretože Michail sa svojho času vyjadril, že si bol v podstate jediný pilot, ktorého svojím spôsobom rešpektoval. Mali ste svoju históriu aj z Maka, z F3, ale bola to rivalita... Rivalita naozaj výnimočná, plná, plná rešpektu, tvrdých súbojov a nádherných súbojov. Ako ty vnímaš toto obdobie a samotného Michaela? Yeah, we had a good races together. Really fantastic races together and, and uh, you know, when we were racing together, the idea was there, uh, it was not about our ego, uh, is it we were racing there for the team for ourselves of course but racing for the team so it was not our ego fighting that let's fight and i don't give up and now we crash you know that was not the purpose of the exercise and and uh, i i think that's that's what michael felt that that I, i'm working for the team i want the team to succeed and if the team succeed i will succeed when you all succeed And I felt that Michael was doing the same thing. And, and uh, we all both figured out this is the way of success for the future. Uh, and uh, also, I think also Michael probably was thinking that we, we never didn't go this political fight and, and start putting down each other in, in the media because it's, it doesn't help. And, and the psychological game, it, it just didn't, we didn't care. You know, if, if we didn't care about that. So, so we were fighting on a, on, a, on a track, straight and fair, and, and going flat out, and, and it, it was good. And I think that that's one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, naše súboje boli veľmi tvrdé, myslím, že veľmi férové, obaja sme to brali ako tímoví hráči. O, išlo o to, aby náš tým, môj tým zvíťazil tým pádom, aj ja budem ten, ten slávnejší. A čo bolo takisto dôležité, nepchali sme do toho politické hry, médiá, nehrali sme žiadne psychologické hry, preto Uh, tie naše súboje boli také výnimočné a také špeciálne. A ja si pamätám ale aj viaceré uh, také vtipné reklamy, ktoré ste spolu nakrútili, aký bol váš vzťah v súkromí. Pretože na trati ste si nedarovali naozaj ani, ani milimeter. A commercial. Yeah. Yeah, we, I think we did one commercial together. Uh, only one? Yeah, I remember one. Was it two? No, one. One in the snow. Yeah, we did one in the snow, yeah, that, yeah it's quite a long, it's such a long time ago, you know, it was, anyway, so we did one, one commercial, it was quite, quite interesting. Thank you, thank you. I think that it's a new time for that ball. Let's go. Uh, pripravme si naše koleso šťastia, uh, pretože uh, my, keď hovoríme o Michalovi Šumacherovi, vidíš tam tú tašku? Vidíš tam tú tašku? Presne tu. No, sú tam dve, takže... Uh, Ice King Tour mimochodom poháňajú prémiové palivá Shell. A vďaka tomu sme sa tu aj dnes mohli spolu všetci takto stretnúť. Máme tu 100-eurovú poukážku. Vnútri v taške, tam je myslím, že ešte ďalší kvalitný matroš, Videl som tam Mikinu, tuto Horst Fuchs, s kolegom vám to predstavia celé. Máme tam aj, aj šiltovku a poďme žrebovať. Mika, to nám neber, to je... Okay, okay. A je to, je to Martin Gago. No, ste to zmontovali riadne. Uh, no, toto, toto mi teraz padlo do oka. Oh, podpísaná šiltovka Aston Martin Fernando Malonzom.
Kto by ju chcel mať na hlave? No. Tak to vám asi ju nedáme tým pánom. A fakt je pekná. No poďme vyžrebovať. Poďme vyžrebovať nejakého veľkého to šťastlivca. Josef Machu! Nie? Preklikli to Dominik Weixner. Pardon, Jozef, sorry. Jozef, sorry. No, Pepa, je to na tebe. Ja tam vidím ešte, počkaj, tu sú Alfa Tauri šiltovky, je tam nejaké tričko, Mikina, Red Bull. Fandí tu niekto Red Bullu? OK, OK, nie je to zlé, nie, dá sa s tým žiť. Poďme žrebovať, poďme žrebovať. Máme tu teda pekné ceny týmu Red Bull Racing a Alfa Tauri. Uvidíme, ako sa budú volať v budúcej sezóne. Adam Berky! To bude určite fanúšik Hamiltona. A Pepa, poďme dať ešte jeden klenot. Podľa mňa tá prílba Carlosa Sainca. Pozeráte sa na ňu? Podpísaná, hej? Podpísaná prílba Carlosa Chiliho Sainca. Pôjde výhercovi, ktorého ideme roztočiť. No... Lukáš Fabiánek. Lukáš, gratulujeme. Poďte vyťazí k nám. Poďte na pódium. Tak. Hneď bude aj fotka na tomto našom trhu blšom. Áno, áno, Red Bull je tvoj, šiltovka je tu. Tak, dajme si ešte fotografiu, poďte chlapci, poďte, nehambite sa. Je to síce starší pán, ale čiperný. A môžeme im aj zatlieskať. To je ono, to je ono. Jasné, kámo, poslúž si. Máme čas. Jasné. Pepa ukazuje na dielo. Je to dobrý nápad? Áno, počúvaj, ale dáme to Mikovi? You wanna try? No, mávajte, kde to bude, kde to bude? Hej. Uuuuh, dobre, máš. Nabíjaj, nabíjaj, nabíjaj. Toto poletí ďaleko, toto poletí ďaleko. Tečie tam niečo? OK, idem ďalej. Pome hore, na tribúnu. Áno, režia, bím! Miro! Miro Gaži, Ice King Tech. Super férový chlap a skvelý odborník. Ďakujeme, ďakujeme, ďakujeme. A ešte jeden. Aha. Tam nedostreli. Tam je to Ferrari tričko, viete, to je poruchové. Nie, nie, nie. Nemier na mňa. Ja už vidím ten Jimmy Jeep, tú kameru, pozri. Áno, ej! Nice one. Páni, ak dovolíte, poďme si trošku sadnúť. Let's take some rest, Mika. Máme tu takéto inovatívne stoličky. 
Oh. A Pepa má aj masážnu. Už sme to naťukli. Uh, Mika Hekinen, dvojnásobný šampión, roky 1998 a 1999. Kto z vás vtedy to sledovali v telke? Kto fandil Mikovi? Priznajte sa. A tak zaberte trošku. To už sem nikdy nepřijede. <laughs> Tak aké to bolo? Stať sa majstrom sveta Formuly 1? Bolo to naplnenie veľkého sna, veľkej, veľkej méty? Ako to zmenilo tvoj život? Well, it is... Uh, it is fantastic. <laughs> it is fantastic. Uh, it's... It's... Uh, it's... Uh, yeah. It's definitely when you do start your career when you're six years old, uh, when you're just a child, uh, then you continue your driving, your hobby, having fun, and, and one day becoming more serious, and, and one day you realize that really I have to not only drive a car fast, but I need to be good in all the aspects to be able to win a world championship. You need to be in the right place, right time, in the right team, Uh, you need to do the right type of exercise, right nutrition, you have to rest correctly and, and to have a very hectic life. And, and you want to be a world champion. And you recognizing how difficult it is. You, you personally recognizing the journey and challenge what you're going through. And you are in a point already when you are really re ready to throw the towel on the floor. That way I cannot do this. I cannot win. And... and uh, That, that requires incredible power from your team, from your racing team, from your management team, from your family to able to push you uh, and, and to, to work on facts, what is going around your life. And, and these facts are very challenging human to take, you know, because it's a criticism. It's quite a lot of criticism what you're going through all the time. And, and, uh, and we humans are sometimes very difficult is to admit that way we are wrong. And, and when you are a Formula One driver and, and you do winning races, but you are not world champion uh, and you're criticized, it's, it's very difficult to take it. And, and when you then finally win a world championship, uh, it does change your life. It, it does give you confidence and uh, knowledge to understand what did I do right. You know, it also makes you understand, of course, what you did wrong, but makes you understand what did I do right, why I end up in this position where I am today. And, and that gives a great pleasure. And at and the same time gives you understanding just it's not only you who did it. It is a team around you what makes able to do this kind of achievement. And, and, uh, and but it, it feels, you know, of course, I getting a lot of attention all the time, but when I look at my mechanics, my engineers, my designers, that time when I was racing, they need the same type of uh, uh, notice like I'm getting, you know. And, and, but again, it feels fantastic. It, it's a, it is a, it's a, every morning when you wake up, you know, it, it's, a, it's a good feeling, you know, and uh, It doesn't mean you have to change your personality or change the attitude towards the other people. Uh, it just makes you realize the importance of the teamwork, what it requires to able to get the success in your life. Je to fantastický pocit, nebudem vám klamať. Zobudiť sa ráno s pocitom, že som majster sveta, navyše to dokonca aj zopakovať. A opäť, pripomenutie toho, čo všetko je za tým. Tímová robota, manažment, správne tréningy, správna strava, mať naozaj to kvalitné zázemie, mať ten silný tím za sebou a zároveň. Vlastne ten úspech vám dá odpovede na tie otázky. Som dosť dobrý, aby som dokázal byť majstrom sveta. Takže 
s lakonickým úsmevom opäť Mika pripomenul, aké fantastické to je a nie je to naozaj pre každého. Nie každému sa to podarí v kariére dosiahnuť. O to viac je vlastne zaujímavejšie, vráťme sa opäť do reality. A súťažná otázka tak pomimo. Majstrom sveta aj pre túto sezonu sa stal Max Verstappen. Bolo to pomerne dominantné, nebudeme si klamať. Schválne, pamätá si z vás niekto, s akým bodovým rozdielom Verstappen vyhral? Nie, nie, nie. 290 bodov. 290 bodový náskok pred Perezom. Šialené, brutálne. 22 veľkých cien, 19 výťazstiev. Čo hovorí Mika na stroj, superstroj s menom Max Verstappen a Red Bull Racing? Trojnásobný šampión, už ťa prekonal mimochodom. Ja, 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 It's an achievement what, what the team has done and the Max has done. It, it's just incredible, incredible uh, uh, consistency and, and performance what they're able to produce. Definitely, definitely uh, uh, something what, what in a history we, we won't forget. Uh, there is no any excuses or because they have this or because they have that. They have done a good job in creating a great racing car uh, and, and uh, creating a great team and, and uh, uh, understanding the tires, how they function, what the car, what kind of car they need to build to make these tires to work very well and uh, having a good balance. Uh, yeah, I think they did a good job. <laughs> Odvedli, work. odvedli neuveriteľnú robotu, úžasnú robotu, špeciálne ako dokázali pochopiť uh, prácu s pneumatikami a samozrejme brilantné výkony Maxa Verstappena k tomu. Ale v čom je podľa teba Max Verstappen výnimočný? Pretože deklasoval svojho tímového kolegu, 10 víťazstiev mimochodom po sebe, rekord, ktorý sa bude ťažko prekonávať. V čom je tá genialita Maxa Verstappena? Well, I, I keep, I, first of all, I keep telling a lot about the teamwork, you know, and that is a very important factor. Uh, the, the consistency is, again, another factor of what the team needs to be able to achieve. Uh, they have, a, again, the great designer working a team, which is Adrian Newey, who used to design my racing car when I was winning. Uh, he's not the only person. There's a couple other people also from my time when I was racing. Great personalities and very smart people. Uh, Formula One is regulations, of course, has. Na zdravie. Yeah. Oh, no. Regulations also are very strange these days in Formula One because you are allowed to test the racing car only maybe six days in a year, maybe a bit more, but around six days. So that's not a lot. Uh, so the car again, is developed very much in these, in the computers and simulators back in the factory. Uh, yes, there is more races. Uh, so, they just have created incredible car with fits, Max Verstappen's driving style. So, how he brakes, how he turns in a corner, when he goes on the throttle, when he lifts the throttle, when he goes on the brake, when he releases the brake, what is his steering input, how aggressively he turns, how much he's using curbs, uh, and, and what kind of air balance he needs, what kind of mechanical balance he needs. There's millions of different things what designers and engineers have to understand about this driver. And, and when they understand about this driver, they can build incredible car around this driver. But first they have to analyze it and to analyze the data to be able to build something. So they have done it very well uh, with Max. Not with Sergio, because Sergio is a very up and down. He's not a very consistent driver. One day he's that, one day he's this, one day he's that. So the, so the team never learns to understand the performance of the driver. You know, you have to stay like that and all the time consistent. And then you can start reading what you need to create. 
Podľa Miku je kľúčom konzistencia aj výkonom Maxa Verstappena, vďaka ktorým sa tým dokáže najlepšie naučiť prispôsobiť ten daný monopost. Pekne v porovnaní s Čekom Perezom, ktorý proste jeho výkony boli hore a dole. Tým pádom ten tým logicky postavil monopost okolo Maxa Verstappena a okolo jeho silných stránok, ktoré vlastne v konečnom zúštovaní znamenali ten úžasný tretí majstrovský titul. Ale zaznelo tu meno, ku ktorému som sa práve chcel dostať. A máme na to krásnu historickú fotografiu geniálneho dizajnéra Adriana Newvyho. Je to vlastne tento rok už jeho 13. majstrovský titul. Mika mu vlastne tiež môže ručičky, nožičky boskávať. A aká je to vlastne spolupráca? Aká to bola spolupráca s Adrianom Newvym? Prezrad nám niečo o ňom. Well, he, he's a very smart guy, first of all. He's a very intelligent uh, um, when, when, it comes down to, when it comes down to car design. I mean, in generally, he's a smart guy. Uh, he's a very funny guy. Uh, very good sense really? of humor. Really? Yeah, yes, he has a very good sense of humor. Uh, he, he loves to enjoy his life. Uh, when it comes down to uh, success, when it comes down to finding solutions, uh, he really, he really uh, is incredible calculating numbers. He can put 15 different things same time on a table and making calculations and make the total sum which is correct. This sounds actually really confusing. Uh, I didn't explain it very well, but he can really, he can really go for many different elements in a racing car and uh, understand why they don't work together, why these 15 things doesn't work together. He's able to calculate that with the numbers. And then he's able to change this, those 15 things, a little bit there, a little bit this. And when you go back in a race car, when you go back to driving, all the problems are solved. And, and, and this, is, this is incredible talent, what he has. Mm -hmm. Adrian Newby, naozaj super mozog a veľmi zábavný človek s dobrým zmyslom pre humor, ale je neuveriteľné, na čo všetko dokáže myslieť. Vlastne na 15 veciach naraz ilustrujeme to. Dokáže všetko predpočítavať, aby to proste sadlo a potom auto vyjde na trať a všetko funguje presne tak, ako má. A teraz je to taká otázka, ktorej sa mnohí podľa mňa boja, ale ja ju, ja ju položím. Pretože zimná prestávka, oddychneme si, ale už sme trošku nažhavení na budúcu sezónu. Kto vyzve Red Bull Racing? Alebo očakáva, že tá ich dominancia môže stále ešte pokračovať? Ja, to je ťažké. Ja to povedal veľmi veľmi McLaren tým a ja som videl, čo to robia. Ja som videl, čo to robia. They, they are very confident to understand their, and they understand their weaknesses. So that is a very positive thing. Uh, and when you look at the Red Bull car and the team, you, it's difficult to see what the weaknesses are because they are so quick. Uh, but uh, it's, it's really difficult to say. It's better if I don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I let you do, to think what it is, but But, uh, you know, of course, I'm not walking inside in a Ferrari factory and looking at different departments and see how they are building their car from this year to next year. The same thing with the, with the Red Bull team. I only can see the development of what the McLaren does mm -hmm. and, and what they have learned now for today and what they're going to do for next year. So they, 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 they're going to go quicker, they're going to go faster, and they have two great drivers. Like Red Bull has only one driver who is taking them to victories. Another one driver is not doing that. And this is a problem, because in a team you need two. You need two drivers to develop the car. Because always when you have two drivers in a team, one driver is maybe extremely fantastic, going in the corners, braking and turning in. But in the mid corner exit, this driver maybe is not fantastic. And the teammate is vice versa. Teammate is fantastic in the mid corner and exit of the corners. And when the engineers are designing a car and thinking about the car and setting up the car, they find fantastic solutions. So now they rely, rely on only 
Red Bull at the max, and, 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 and the max has also weaknesses, but he doesn't tell anybody, of course. Uh, but it's automatic. There is no perfect racing driver. We have always some weaknesses, some, well, except me, of course, I was perfect. <laughs> you know, but you know, there, is always, there is always some weaknesses. You know. Tipný chalanisko, idem za vami po otázku. Každý pilot má nejaké slabiny, iba ja, Mika Hekinen, som žiadne nemal uh, zo srandy, ale zdôraznil to, že je veľmi, veľmi dôležité uh, mať dvoch silných pilotov uh, v týme a Red Bull má iba jedného, pretože tým pádom je obmedzený samotný vývoj. No ale na tú otázku, čo ste taký vážny? Bude sa niekto pýtať? No a teraz uh, Mika verí McLarenu. Samozrejme, nevidí do garáže, nevidí do továrne v Maranele, nevidí do ostatných tímov, ale videl, čo sa deje v McLarene a myslí si, že by mohli byť pomerne silní a vyzvať Red Bull. Chlapi, inak z diálky vyzeráte oveľa lepšie. To som presne doufal, že řekneš. No, počúvajte, ale to je parádny výhľad. Takže máme tu otázku. Aston Martin, krásne tričko. Ahoj, ako sa voláš? Čau, ja som Michal. Z Brna sa pamät poznáš možno. Vodu som ti otváral. Uh, so my question is, uh, I had brought my mom here because she was a big fan 20 years ago. She to show me the Formula One. So this is the event for her. And she has a question for you. She's interested in, like, if they let you drive the newest models of Formula, the cars nowadays, like, if you can compare them from the past, the, your time that you were driving, and nowadays. OK, už len preložím. Uh, je tu aj mamička, veľká faninka, Miková, čo je krásne, krásne gesto. Predpokladám, že je tu viacero takýchto príbehov. A otázka znela, že či Mika má možnosť vlastne testovať alebo jazdiť s tými novšími monopostami a porovnať ich uh, s tými z jeho éry. Yeah, it would be quite a difference. It would be quite a difference, you know, if, if uh, I retired 2001. So if I would take my mobile phone in 2001 and I would take my mobile phone today, there would be a quite a big difference. You know, I think the screen in my time was black and white, you know. Uh, so it, it, it is a difference. You know, the cars are much more efficient. They are aerodynamically very developed. Uh, the materials are much better uh, in terms of quality. Uh, the tires has developed, they're much more stable. Uh, so there's a lot of, lot, of different, lot of different elements has become better, for sure. Uh, I think the only negative thing would be the weight. I think the cars today in Formula One, compared to my time, is maybe at least 200 kilos heavier. So that is a lot, maybe even more, I think. So, so the weight is always a problem. You know, when you go under braking or accelerate or cornering, it's always a minus when you have more weight. Uh, so so that, that's the only thing. And, and uh, yeah, I think th there's a couple of, couple of uh, comparisons. Uh, áno, tak v 2001, keby som si zobral nie, mobil, tak bol ešte čierno biely takže ten progres bol obrovský, ale aby som to skrátil, vlastne v dnešnej dobe tie monoposty sú oveľa vyvinutejšie, lepšie, komplexnejšie, ale zároveň sú ťažšie, minimálne o 200 kg, takže tá váha s nimi je, tá jazda s nimi je samozrejme oveľa komplikovanejšia, ale ešte naťuknem tú otázku, keby si mal možnosť jazdiť s nejakým monopostom historickým, už si niečo to aj zažil, z predchádzajúcej éry, ktorý v tebe vyvolal takú najväčšiu emóciu? The cars that I was racing, yeah. I mean, definitely, you know, the world championship car in 1998, when I won, won, won the world championship, that, that car was definitely incredible car. It was such a amazing in terms of uh, design. Uh, it, it was simply just doing anything what I wanted the car to do. So, so that means your driving, driving can be absolutely perfect. Uh, you can take exactly line what you take. 
It doesn't matter are you low speed, medium speed, high speed. You all the time control with the car. And, and engine power was incredible. Uh, the power curve example, you know, you start performing out of the corner when you had a six and a half thousand RPM until 18,000. So you had a massive torque, you had a massive power, uh, and it was just incredible machine. It was a good one. It was a good one. Speciálně ten vos z 99. A úžasný. very old ones, and also yeah. very, I mean very old ones. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I thought that, that was already old. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Takže z 99. <laughs> predstavte si len otáčky 18 tisíc, čo to vytáčalo. Bolo to úžasné, úžasný monopost v pomalých, rýchlých, stredných zákrutách. Absolutne, absolutne skvelý so silným motorom. Yeah, I think the one car in would be interesting is to, of course, 1988 McLaren uh, would be interesting, but also 97. I think that could be an interesting car to drive, a McLaren. Mm -hmm. Čiže uh, 87 rok a, a 88, no, to MP4 štvorka, ak ma pamäť neklame, nádherné bielo-červené monoposty. A teraz máme ešte jednu nepríjemnú otázku, nechal som si to takto na záver. Uh, Mika, čo tvoj sabatikal? Ukončil si, uh, prerušil si kariéru v 2001. Po veku 33 rokov a my stále čakáme na ten comeback. <laughs> yeah, no, and the Christmas is coming. And the Christmas is coming, you know. Uh, it's a, it, the water racing is, is a brilliant sport. It's a really good fun. And, and the driving a racing car, it is a great fun. Uh, but it, it, the problem is because I'm thinking about winning. And, and I have difficulties to adapt my mind that way. Okay, we can just go there and be position 20. You know, so it's really difficult. Uh, and and uh, just generally motorsport, I'm not talking about Formula One. Uh, you know, and I'll give you an example. If I would go to Formula One car now to sit down in Formula One car and I would drive it and I would go I would go under braking, you know, some corner and, and really just maximize my braking. My body weight would be easily more than 400 kilos. So the G load is really high in Formula One cars. It's five to six to G. So I can feel my stomach, you know, it would be so heavy. But anyway, so, uh, but like I say, you know, motor racing is fun. It's really good fun. And, and uh, I, I do, you know, like in, uh, Like in, I, I live in Monaco and, and sometimes I go to Finland and like uh, now in New Year I plan to go to Finland and my place, there's a lake next to it. I think every Finn has a lake next to it because there's so many lakes, <laughs> lakes over there. But, but everybody does build a racing track on a lake. Everybody. You know, it doesn't matter which lake you have, you have a racetrack there and Kids are driving there with the rally cars or go-karts and they're having fun. So that's what I do. So when I go New Year in Finland, I will be driving there, you know, flat out and having fun. Konec koncov, ako povedal James Hunt, motorsport musí byť hlavne zábava a Miku vlastne trápilo to, že on má tú výťaznú povahu, on si nevie predstaviť, že by jazdil ďalej a skončil by nejaký 20. To by ho vôbec, vôbec nebavilo. A, a spomenul aj vtipnú historku, teda, no jednak vtipnú, keby teraz si sadol do monopostu, tak preťaženie niekoľkých G by znamenalo, že tam by bolo 400 kg a, a pečenka by mu asi rozbila hlavu. To len tak parafrazujem. Ale, ale spomína aj to, že nový rok bude tráviť vo Fínsku, máme tam milión jazier samozrejme, a zároveň každý tam nejakým spôsobom preteka, takže spolu s deťmi sa tam, sa tam bude zabávať. Poďme na vašu otázku ešte. Podľa mňa je čas. Ešte si jednu dajme. Áno, počkaj, tuto je nejaký štramák. A, nie, pán fotograf, nebojte sa. Ahoj, uh, chcel som sa zeptat... Uh, ne. <laughs> chcel som sa zeptat, jestli niekoľkrát už zmínil uh, Mika, že... Uh, z Red Bullu. <laughs> Nebuď strese, je tu iba 3000 ľudí. To je úplná pohoda. Pohoda, pohoda. 
Všetci sa teraz na teba pozerajú. Ok, že Sergio Perez nejezdí konstantne a proste ten kluk to v sobe asi evidentne už nemá, tak jestli si myslí, jestli teďka niekto na gridu aktuálne má na to místo byť ako v Red Bullu na druhé sračce a případně jestli to je teda Daniel Ricciardo. Oh, 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 vystrelil si, dobré, dobré, veľmi dobrá otázka. Ah, that's a very good question. It's a very good question. You know, it's no, no question about that. The problem is that Max has been in the team quite a long time. Oh, he's been in the team a long time. He has won a world championship with the team. And like I explained earlier, the team exactly knows how to build the car for him. So whoever jumps in the team, uh, it, it will be a nightmare because the car may be not going to suit the driver's style and, and to, to develop the car one day for him it would take a time. It would take maybe two years, could maybe take three years and, and, uh, and the Max would be still probably performing flat out and, and building a car for himself. So the team would have to start making compromises and they don't want to really do these compromises. But you're looking for maybe the driver who it would be <laughs> who would be suitable in that position. Uh, uh, it would be very difficult to say which one it would be. Okay. I don't, don't want to say anything. <laughs> Nie, ale je to férová odpoveď a, a my si môžeme samozrejme podebatovať, že vedeme si tam predstaviť toho, hentoho, tamtoho a spýtame sa dvojnásobného šampióna a on vám povie, že že vlastne nevie, pretože byť kolegom Maxa Verstappena je vlastne taká nočná mora je v tom týme zabývaný. Keby tam prišiel niekto nový, potreboval by no, minimálne dva roky a teraz tým by musel robiť kompromisy, ktoré by nechcel robiť. Takže naozaj asi neexistuje správna odpoveď na túto otázku. Asi nám to ukáže len život. Dajme si ešte jednu otázku. Ja cítim potenciál, cítim poten... idem dozadu zase, ak sa nepotknem. Ja by som nejakú dámu vyzval. Máme tu nejakú dievčinu. A vid- vidím, vidím, ruka hore, ruka hore, ahoj. Počúvame. Ahoj. Uh, I would like to ask you, what do you think about this problem with track limits all the time, cancelling the times? Výborne. A normálne ja vám prozradím ako takovú vychytávku. My sme sa ešte len sedeli, myslím si, že to bolo včera, bavili sme sa o tom, hele, nedali by sme tam niekoho, nepripravili by sme si otázku, že by sa třeba niekto Miky zeptal na ty traťové limity, a on říká, no, hele, necháme tomu volný průběh, prostě vážíme si toho vašeho jako vstupu do toho a že já věřím tomu, že nějaká taková dobrá otázka přijde. A ještě říká, jo, to je asi pravda, oni jsou fakt dobrý a práská ještě k tomu takhle hezky jako na závěr. No, klobouk dolů, krásný. Děkujeme velmi pěkně, úžasné. A niekedy sa musím uštipnúť, že či to, či to nie je len sen, ale naozaj tá, tá chémia, telepatia medzi nami je fantastická. Takže otázka na Miku Hekinena, čo by spravil s tými prekliatými traťovými limitmi? Yeah, it, it is definitely a good question and it's a, it's a big issue and, and, and a, it's a big discussion constantly all the time. I think whatever, we, whatever Formula 1 decides to do or FIA decides to do, they have to, they have to first focus on safety. And, and the safety is the element what has to lead for the right solution. So I have no idea what they should do. Áno, nie je to jednoduché. Nie je to jednoduché a opäť pripomenutie toho, že FIA musí dbať najprv na bezpečnosť, ale my fakt nevieme, čo, čo s tým urobí. Ja fakt neviem, ale lezie nám to na nervy. Nebudeme si klamať. Uh, priatelia, ono sa to nezdá, ale uletelo to. My už sme vlastne v polovici dnešnej show. Srandujem, srandujem. Je najvyšší čas rozdať tieto nádherné, úžasné ceny, ktoré tu ešte máme. Poprosím vašu asistenciu a bude to teraz ocípať Inak tu Alfa Tauri šiltovku niekto vyhral, nie? Stále nám to zostalo? Ty si ju nikomu nedal. OK, bereme domov. Uh... Štramák. Štramák lázenský. Ja si myslím, že mnohí z vás vysmedli. Že, Pepa? 
Ferrari Trento od nášho úžasného partnera Vínujeme SK. Samozrejme, povinnosťou je to vystriekať priamo na podiu a urobíme si mistr mokré tričko. No, kto vyhrá? Priamo z pódia Ferrari Trento. Petr Frída. Ej, emocioni, emocioni. Hodinky. Hodinky Festina. Krásna edícia, pozrite sa, šarmantná asistentka zladila k tomu aj Sako. Krásne, krásne, krásne hodinky Festina. Výhra niekto z vás. Poďme žrebovať, poďme, poďme žrebovať. Ja mám takú radosť, tento predvianočný čas. No. Matúš, Matúš Vavžín. Toľko fanúšikov z Českej republiky, wow. Mimochodom, mám takú otázku, lebo tieto naše pravidelné stretnutia formulovej rodiny sú práve o tom, že sa tak spájame všetci. Sme tu v Bratislave, mám pocit, že tak v strede. Kto pricestoval najďalej sem? Povedzte. Praha. Michalovce. Dánsko? Z Dánska niekto priletel sem? Nizozemsko? Amerika, Afrika, jasné, Madagaskar. Ja som to vedel, ja som to vedel. Nádherné hodinky Festina budú ukazovať ten správny čas jednému z vás. Poďme na to. No už prituhuje, už tie ceny, no už jedna lepšia ako druhá. Maximilián, kde si Maximilián? A toto sú presne tie momenty, všimáš Pepa, že ten potlesk už je taký vlažnejší. Vieš, už... Áno, zatím tam nejaké je, on prúšvih bude, až tam bude poslední cena, že jo? Pak už sa nebude tleskať. Tiež by som to chcel vyhrať, nepodarilo sa, ale po... Oju, ty máš poukážku. Ja som ich zase položil, v klidu. Poďme na to, poďme na to, pretože máme tu od Futbal Tour SK, respektíve Futbal Tour CZ, krásny, fantastický, fenomenálny zájazd k Mikovi domov, do Monaka, na veľkú cenu Monaka, to bude 2024, dokonca aj so vstupenkou. Hej, už to tu švítori, už to tu šušti a ja vám rozumiem. Poďme to roztočiť, ja vám prúdko závidím. Ajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajajaj
To byla docela divočina, jsem se taky potil. Ale v trošičku méně než s těma tratěma dneska, musím říct pravdu. Tam to přece jenom točení tím volantem jde trochu líp, než podávat dráhy. Ale proč ji tady máme, není úplně tak náhodou, jelikož už jste si asi většina z vás mohli všimnout minimálně tady v podstatě ve spodu, protože jste to krásně obsadili všichni vy, co jste už členi našeho Ice King týmu. Tak proč je tady ta pragovka? Protože v součástí toho, když budete piloty Ice King týmu, můžete zároveň vyhrát svezení se mnou v Praga Bohéma v tom novém hypersportu, který jste viděli právě v Ostravě, takže to si myslím, že bude moc pěkný zážitek. Takže kdo ještě není pilotem v našem Ice King týmu, tak určitě se to vyplatí v rámci vánoční soutěže, spousta nádherných cen, podepsaný přilby, startovací balíček, štěvou se v něm krásně vyfotil v té pláštěnce prši plášky, Moc hezký, taky sluší mu to, takže se určitě na to podívejte, iceking.tv a tam právě můžeme soutěžit, no můžete soutěžit o svezení v Pragovce, ja, ale tentokrát je to jenom čepice. Já se strašně těším na to žrebovaně 1.1.2024, ty poopičné stavy, ako za stretněme tradičně na tom streame, na Zoome a budeme žrebovat. Ale teraz, máme tu dvě šiltovky, pojďme to rozlusknout. Pojďme to rozlusknout. Lebo potom už tam zůstává iba posledná záležitost. Aj Max Klempa, pozri, víťazný Max, víťazný Max. Poďme odovzdať ceny zatiaľ a necháme si prílbičku o chvíľočku. Poďte, teraz, teraz je ta chvíľa, priatelia. Teraz to všetko domiešame a domrvíme, takže hláste, kto vyhral čo. Dajme hlasnejšie hudbu, aby to zaniklo. Počkej, máme viac výhercov ako cien? Dvakrát, že jo? Ja som si to... Ja som si to myslel, že ty hodinky byli dvakrát. Nechtiel som ti do toho kecať, pretože teďka som jenom šarmantní asistentka, ale... Ale bylo to tak, no. Tak musím dať svoje asi tým pádom. To je problém. Je, no tak to seš skvelej. To děkuje. Máme to vyřešený. Dostane jednu ze dvou čepic. OK, klobučík dole. Ďakujeme veľmi pekne. Wow, krásne gesto. Super. A poďte chlapi spolu. Mika, please. To je nadšenie. Perfektné. Super, chalani. Thank you. Gratulujeme, gratulujeme, gratulujeme. No, moc si tu flašu nevystriekal, ale nevadí. Klidně můžeš, jo, vole? Tak se předveď. Ne, 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 Klud. To, to by jsme vám neurobili zase. Máme vás příliš rádi. A Pepa, no čo, jdeme na to? No potom už závěrečný segment. Tak já to pozdvihnu. A ticho zostalo. To teda, teď už nikdo, ale už, aby jsme slyšeli normálně i špendlik spadnou. No, 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 normálně. Odepsaná. To, jak levý král už to drž, víš, rafiky už. Je to tu podpísaná. Mini prílba Miku Hekinena. Nádherná. Nádherný kúsok. Nejaké ešte nájdete aj na formulastore.sk. Poďme žrebovať. Poďme žrebovať. To je tak nádherná cena. Poďme. Už teraz závidím tomu víťazovi. Napätie, 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 napätie. Martin Drobný! Jej, je to tam! Je to tam! Fanušik McLarenu, jaj, to vyšlo geniálne. Gratulujem. Jej, to sú krásne Vianoce, to sú krásne Vianoce. Perfektné. Rád by som ešte niečo povedal. Uh, uh, mám 33 a fandím Mikovi asi od 
svojich 7 rokov a mám z toho neskutočnú radosť, že som sa s ním mohol stretnúť a teším sa ako malé decko proste. Úžasné, úžasné, úžasné. Yes! Yes! Presne o tom to je Ice King. Ja sa tak strašne, strašne teším. Akurát pozerám na tie hodziny historické, ktoré nám tu dali, že sa nám kráti čas. Že sa nám kráti čas a my ideme sa dostať do segmentu ktorý je záverečný a opäť budeme potrebovať hudbu, pretože opäť chceme počuť vlastne v tom, čo mi je Mika najlepší. A to je veštenie. Pozrime sa na GRID 2024. Aké sú očakávania, pán Hekinen? Aké budú prekvapenia? Kto bude majster sveta? Prezrate nám, na čo sa máme tešiť v budúcej sezóne. Well, it's gonna be a good one, eh? Max? <laughs> well, I think it's a... I think... Uh, I think the Max, of course, he is full of confidence. Uh, and and it's it's gonna be uh, incredible to see if if he what what level he gonna put his performance next. Ešte ďalší level? Neblázni. Yeah, because you are not going to next season like you went. Uh -huh. You know, you, every season is a new season, and and you want to be better. Uh, is it your fitness? Is your mental strength? Is it your communication? Uh, is there new people in the team? So it is a new challenge coming up. So, so you have, you have to be better for going for next season. And also it requires your amount of work you do with the team. So when the season is now, let's call it over, uh, are you just going holidays for a couple of months? Or are you going to go to the factory every day to work with the people to make the team motivated and to make the car to be better for next year? So there's many different things what you can do. Uh, are you ready for that? Are you ready to do that commitment? It's, it, it's interesting because if, if Max doesn't do that, somebody else will do that. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, wait a second. To znamená, že Mika očekáva, kam dokáže do akého levelu dokáže ešte Max Verstappen pozdvihnúť svoje výkony? Je to o tom, že buď pôjdete na prázdniny, váľaci šunky, alebo pôjdete do továrne motivovať znovu tým a na to je Mika veľmi zvedavý. Ale kto by mal, kto asi vyzve Red Bull podľa teba? Mercedes? Lewis Hamilton? Ferrari? McLaren? Fernando? Russell! Malý zabiják, ja ťa vidím, dobre. Ja, I mean, uh, you know, these are very, you know, these are very difficult things. My vieme, Mika, ale ty si veštec, hej? Takže preto sa pýtame tieto otázky. No, it's, it's very difficult things. Uh, ale my vieme, Mika, my to nahrávame, nemusíš byť v strese. Je to v pohode. Ide no, live stream. It, it's, um, I'm still looking to McLaren, you know. They, they, they're so convinced in what they do. Uh, you know, they do a great job, you know. Uh, I think uh, George Russell has learned this year a lot. You know, uh, is this experience, what he got this year, enough for next year to be absolutely flat out all the way through the year? Uh, is Lewis, again, motivated? He's having a really, really tough time for sure, you know. And and the Mercedes, they has to, they have to get the car in in a level where the drivers don't complain, because they the car is not in a level what car would you know drivers expecting. They have to make compromises all the time, 
and it's not part of the game. The compromises are not part of the driving. So uh, let's see if they're able to fix the problem. Uh, but Russell is interesting to see. I'm sure the love is going to be consistent. Uh, but McLaren again. I'm, I'm going for that. Piastri and Lando, how they're going to do. Alonso, I think he has to start taking my classes soon. That <laughs> way he, can, he can see. But he's, <laughs> but he's a great guy. He's doing a mega job. I mean, full, full... Uh, uh, confidence and and uh, and uh, I respect him enormously him to able to go so far in his life uh, in in the motor racing in a level which is called formula one it is amazing uh, because it's not only thinking about money money it's not that it is a passion it is the it is the the, the, the moment of working with the people then I have to say to Albon Albon is gonna be interesting you know uh, I think he did some good job this year uh, and, and the car, what they had, was not so brilliant. Uh, so he did a good. It's interesting to see he has found something. You know, if he can maintain the level what he did, would would be good to see him do it well because he is a he's a super talent that mm -hmm. guy. And, and many many Formula One drivers respect him enormously in terms of his performance. So is he able to get him speed? What what he really can do is it's interesting to see. Uh -huh. Začneme od konca. Alex Albon veľmi prekvapil Miku a ten level, kam to dotiahol, ako bude napredovať v budúcej sezóne. Napriek tomu ale Mika verí McLarenu. Verí Oscarovi, verí Landovi, že sa tam hore zamiešajú. Čo sa týka Mercedesu, George Russell, ten si prešiel ťažším obdobím, naučil sa dôležité lekcie v tejto sezóne a je zvedavý, lebo Mercedes musí už konečne proste svojim pilotom dať monopost, s ktorým nebudú musieť robiť milión kompromisov. A ja viem, že sú Vianoce, je to pekné obdobie a nechcem kaziť tieto sviatky, ale predsa len, Mika, ja sa musím opýtať na Ferrari. Že to čakanie na titul, ak sa smeje po podfúz, videli ste, od 2007. What's wrong? Kde je problém vo Ferrari? Sú to piloti? Leclerc, Sainz? Alebo sú to tiež ten najvyšší level v tvojich očiach? Yeah, it's it's good to think. Is it the management? Is it the drivers? Is it the car? Is it the performance of the engine? Uh, is it aerodynamics? It's so many different elements. But uh, when you recognize there is a problem, you have to start from somewhere. And and I think the team has to understand where to start. You know, uh, teams always easy to blame the drivers that way the drivers are not good enough let's change the drivers that's the problem but it's not always the full story and like i mentioned earlier that way if the drivers are clever enough to analyze through the data about their performance the team cannot say nothing um, i think i i feel like the the, the ferrari is going the right direction you know uh Fred Wasser is a, is a very experienced uh, team manager, the team owner, uh, great passion for motor racing. He, he's, a, he's a good communicating with people. So I, I'm confident with the time he can, he can really do the good job for the team. But it, again, it doesn't, happen, it doesn't happen overnight. And you can see the McLaren, how many years they've been struggling. And, and, but they have the goal. They said, you know, it takes four or five years when we are there. Just let's keep working and let's follow to our plan. And that day we have to achieve our result. And so far they are in their goal. And, and I think Ferrari, you know, they, they have the same thing. I think uh, it's just moment when they get in the right. I talk too much. But anyway, so I think they, uh, I think they will get there sooner or later. <laughs> skôr či neskôr... Not in this Christmas, you know. Aj. Ferrari sa tam dostane. Najdôležitejšie je identifikovať ten, ten správny smer a Mika si myslí, že Fred Vasser je ten správny šéf so svojimi prednostiami, ktorý môže Ferrari pozdvihnúť na najvyšší stupienok. No, toľko väždby. Budúci rok si to prehráme zo záznamu a uvidíme, ako na tom budeme, ale znamená to, že sme sa priblížili k záveru. Je mi to pomerne nepríjemné, takto. Vedeli by sme tu klabosiť ešte ďalšie 3 hodiny a teraz to začne.
A on tam má už, tuším, Rajkonena, Leclerca a už... Jasné, jasné. Takže, priatelia. Áno, jasné, hrdina dňa. No, to sú darčeky pre Miku. Ďakujeme veľmi pekne. Má 5 detí, takže určite ho to poteší. Poď, poď, nehambí sa, poď. Nehambí sa. Táta zostane dole, radšej. Jej, to je krásna kresba. Hráme na želanie. Cítim sa ako v škôlke. Je to zlaté. Na priezor touto. Na priezor. Prepačte, prepač. Pozrite sa na tú krásnu, krásnu kresbu. Otočíš sa, prosím, na publikum. Otočíš sa tam. Tak. Krásne. Jedna k jednej. Na nerozoznanie. Krásne. Krásne. Tak. Tak. Zápetie už iba ďalších 3000 žiadostí, ale žiaden problém. Letí to až zajtra. A máme tu ešte jednu poslednú šiltovku. Veľký potlesk, veľký potlesk, krásna kresba. Hneď zbadal tú šiltovku a vyká, McLaren. Priatelia, aká krásna nedela. Bez pretekov, ale napriek tomu spoločnosť absolútne fenomenálna, úžasná, geniálna. Stretnutie, na ktoré budeme ešte roky, roku chce spomínať a je našou obrovskou cťou, že prišiel medzi nás dvojnásobný šampión Formuly 1. Ďakujeme veľmi pekne. Mika Hekinen! Já bych si ještě sednul, možná. A, ne, počkej, počkej. Všichni mizej, a... odcházej. Mo... Moja mama hovorí, že sny si treba plniť a pritom sa plní len paprika, ale poďme ho zavolať naspäť. My tu máme ešte nejaký náboj, ktorý by sme vystrelili, tak poďme na to. Poďme skandovať. My, ka, my, ka, my, ka. Podpísané tričko Ice King poletí na niekoho z vás. Pepa, je čas na selfie, lebo to sme zabudli. A vždy zabudáme. Let's make a selfie, Mika, please. And then... Pepa má lepší profil z druhej strany. A strašne sa tešíme, že ste dnes prišli. A že je tu s nami Mika Hekinen! A on chce ísť do davu, pozor! Ej, pozor! Kryte sa! James Bond prichádza! Agent Miko Hekinen! Bim! Úžasný, charizmatický, 
vtipný a hlavne šampión, Mr. Mika Hekinen! No, uh, ale po 11 rokoch teraz takto, čo? Uzatvárať veľkú kapitolu. Ja neviem, jestli to je smutný, nebo není vlastne. No, 9 rokov na Sport 1, Sport 2, spoločného komentovania, spoločných emócií, zážitkov. Proste to bolo úžasné hlášok toho všetkého, čo sme prežili. 209 veľkých cien, naozaj je to... Je to neuveriteľné. A, a, a lomcujú so mnou emócie, pretože... Boli 11 rokov. Je to neskutečný. Děkujeme hlavně vám. Děkujeme za, za úžasnou podporu. Je to krásný, že i na Vánoce se tady takhle můžeme všichni potkat. A samozřejmě to, že vlastně sice po těch devíti letech nějak tak končíme na Sport TV a vlastně vy jste to s náma sledovali, zažívali, doufám teda i celou dobu, ne, že jste se najednou jako připojili až díky Netflixu. Věřím tomu, že to bylo už předtím, ale i tak je to naprosto skvělý. No a Ice King jede dál. Všechno, potkali jsme se i potom, když teda všechno skončilo, a King nekončí, všechno jede dál, ale co dělat, že jo, co dál, protože nás dva to komentování prostě baví docela. Budoucí sezón je na stanici Nova Sport, těšíme se na vás! Yes! Děkujeme! Děkujeme! Nech žije Formulová rodina, nech žije Ice King. Šťastné a veselé. Želá Jozef Král a Števo Ajzele. Ahoj. Ahoj. Ahoj.